the story so far. Agent 47 and his handler, Diana Burnwood, are the world's top assassins working for the ICA. When all of their recent missions turn out to be contracts for a shadow client, things take an unexpected turn. All their targets have been operatives in an invisible organization known as Providence. Providence has infiltrated the highest echelons of power and secretly owns our world. The Shadow Client wages a silent war against them. And so the Constant, Providence's enigmatic controller, seeks Diana out. His request, track down and eliminate the Shadow Client. In return, he offers something irresistible. The truth of 47's lost origins. Neither know that the man they hunt is 47's childhood friend. And unlike 47, he remembers everything. Al Morena's house is just up the beach. Our intel indicates that she and her team are laying low, most likely planning the militia's next strike. Reynard is one of the Shadow Clan's top lieutenants, and yet she's not a target. Not yet, anyway. She's no doubt high on our client's list, but for now, it's information we seek. Infiltrate the house and get us a lead on the Shadow Client. Up for some B&E, 47. On my way. They could be out. Could be lying low. The satellite scans were inconclusive. Only one way to find out, I'm afraid. Bodies. Male and female. Early 30s. Executed. I see them. Oh, poor bastards. Looks like Reynard's grisly handiwork, all right. She was never shy about collateral damage. The owners? Don't think so. The house is registered to a non-existing environmental NGO. This feels more like identity theft. Like you, Reynard is known to use disguises. Hmm. Keep looking, 47. Nothing we can do for these people now. Found something. Looks like research reports. Berlin, Shanghai. Every major malicious strike since Thomas Cross's kidnapping. Looks like Reynard had a hand in all of them. All in the past, I'm afraid. Keep looking, 47. Found something. A file on Rupert Pierce. Founder of Dynasty Global. The world's largest internet retailer. Hmm. If Pierce is a Providence operative, he's likely on the Shadow Client's hit list. But it's not what we came for. Keep looking, 47. Forty-seven. That computer. See if you can't access it. In 
encrypted. Hmm. Assuming there's a key, Reynard wouldn't just leave it lying around. Wait. According to the floor plan, the room you're in should be a lot bigger. There might be a concealed space behind the wall. Check for hidden panels, 47. Nicely done, 47. Getting caught on tape is the last thing we need. Here we go. For the office computer, no doubt. Hmm. Appears Reynard's cell is launching another strike. Those are sewer maps of a residential area in Wellington. Well, there's nothing we can do about it now. Our priority is the Shadow Client. I'm in. Hurry. I'm detecting movement up the road. A motorcade, possibly Reynard's. Uploading the data. Hold on. Receiving it now. Hmm. Nothing on the Shadow Client or the other cells. No names, no aliases. I doubt she even knows whom she's working for. Wait, here's something. A message from Robert Knox of Kronstadt Industries. And by the sound of it, he's a Providence operative. A defector. Well, well, well. Client won't like this one bit. And you can't wait to tell him. They're back. Multiple hostiles. I see them. Damn. Okay, we've got all we're going to get. Go to stage 247. Eliminate Reynard, and preferably without raising suspicion. One step ahead of the Shadow Client for once. Let's keep it that way. Ugh, oh, I thought this night would never end. What a snob fest. And I even missed out on the action. Oh, I'm sorry you had to endure all that free champagne and cello music, Orson. What can I say? You really took one for the yeah, team. Yeah, well, I say stick to what you know. Rex Larson four days ago was indeed an act of terrorism. This is the fifth titan of industry to be murdered Welcome since the home. kidnapping um, and execution and of media guess. mogul Thomas Cross it's in Orson. New York a month ago. Or While say. no organization Ugh, has yet claimed responsibility, mind. authorities believe these politically motivated killings are the work of highly trained mercenaries. In Japan, Max, you in here? Max, come to mommy. Jared, terrace all clear. Copy that. Do a sweep of the upstairs while you're at it. I knew you were gonna say that. So, uh, you gonna tell me who it was we just kidnapped? House guests of the PM. The wife and two daughters of one Lance Donovan, the VP of Dynasty Global. The online retailer? Uh-huh. Donovan is back in London, working. He should receive the pictures as we speak. Ah, blackmail. Donovan's boss, Dynasty CEO Rupert Pierce, is a top Providence operative. But we can't get near him, so I decided to, well, do a bit of outsourcing. Oh, could you fix me a cup of tea? Sure thing. You want sugar? Honey? Um, honey. No problemo. Mr. Donovan. Who I am is not important. You have seen the pictures, yes? Good. I will tell you exactly what to do. Do it swiftly and without question, and your wife and children go free, unharmed. Refuse or hesitate, and your family dies. Attempt to signal or warn anybody, and your family dies. Do we have terms? Mm, not very convincing, Mr. Donovan. Take a deep breath and try again. Much better. Now. You will take the stairs up to the rooftop helipad where your boss, Rupert Pierce, is taking his morning jog. You will inform his guards that you are delivering an urgent message 
you will approach Mr. Pierce, lure him close to the edge, and toss him off the building. Hey, you want green tea or mango? What do you think? You heard me, Mr. Donovan. The life of your boss for the life of your wife and daughters. Shouldn't be much of a choice, even for a workaholic. Do you understand me? Very good. Now, go. If I don't hear sirens from downtown London in five minutes, your family suffers the consequences. Best of luck, Mr. Donovan. We thank you for your sacrifice. Is it done? Good as. And Mr. Donovan's wife and children? The guys will let them go at the stroke of midnight, unless I say otherwise. Boss's orders. You know how squeamish she gets about collateral damage. Ugh. Unbelievable. I'm gonna turn in. You come in or what? Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. Gerard, we're turning in. You can keep guard outside the door. Oh, and tell the guys to keep a lookout for Max once they dispose of the bodies, yeah? Damn. Damn thing must have run off again. <laughs> Let go of the neighborhood pets. Yeah, heads up, everyone. Max is on the prowl again. So if you find a trail of blood, it's just nature taking its course. Over. So... Welcome home, Alma. I'm staying here too, you know. The least you could do is teach it my name. Or maybe you don't expect to keep me around long enough to bother, is that it? I, uh, didn't know it was that important to you, Orson. What can I say? My bad. I've been using the safe house for years. Right, you and Sean. Bet the house knew his name. Okay, I guess I could change it into... Welcome, Alma and Sean, too. <laughs> How's that? Mm, fa me. Or maybe second Sean. That has a nice ring to it, don't you think? Or Sean Light. <laughs> you know what I'll think of some more while I go and brush my teeth. Fine. I'm gonna hit the shower. You do that, Orson. When are you shipping out again? Say, say what? I said, when are you shipping out again? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm supposed to rendezvous with the team in Riga for like five days from now. I've got no idea what the mission is or who my teammates are, but all this secrecy is starting to get on my nerves. You know the boss, belt and suspenders kind of guy. Well, I don't, and neither do you. That's kind of my, uh, that's kind of my point. Call me old fashioned, but like I say, uh, I like to know who I'm risking my life for. You know why? The rest are details. It's easy for you to say. At least you're in the loop. I take orders just like you. In fact, the boss deliberately keeps me out of the loop. I don't even know who the other cells are. Compartmentalization is key. Yeah, I guess. That's Sean dude. Are the work of 
some highly trained mercenaries. In Japan, Damn bands too tight. Much hail Miss my old watch. Robot. And this just in. In downtown London, a man has allegedly plummeted to his death from the headquarters of Dynasty Global, the world's largest internet retailer. While the identity is unconfirmed, several eyewitness tweets claim that the deceased is none other than Rupert Pierce, Dynasty's founder and CEO. We will keep you updated as this story develops. I am Pam Kingsley, GNN News. Well, that's that. Smoke on the balcony? Yeah, sure. How about a scotch? No, I just brushed my teeth. Oh, well, suit yourself. I'm having one before bed then. Good for the blood flow. Reminds me, I need you to do something for me. Okay, what's the gig? It's a cakewalk, really. I just need you and the boys to pick up a shipment in Brussels three days from now. A truckload of cutting-edge Kronstadt Industries military hardware. Drones and shit. You'll get a kick out of it, I promise. Well, shit, the Noxes really are defecting. High-level Providence stooges like them? That's a real feather in your cap. So why aren't you the one doing the honors? See, there's just a teensy possibility that it could be a trap. And if it is, well, I'm too important to risk. Wow. Don't start. No, no, I get it. Everyone's expendable, but some are more expendable than others. Is that it? I wouldn't put it on a t-shirt, but, well, yeah. In a nutshell. Fine, I'll do it. I know you can hold your own and all that, but I want you to be safe, Alma. I mean, I'd hate it if... Oh, jeez, it's chilly out here. Night, Alma. If you need your grass, the bag's in the medical cabinet. No need. I'm dog tired. The second I close my eyes, I'll be dead to the world. Night second, Sean. Shut up. Well done, 47. Now get off the property.
The Mercs have discovered your boat, 47. They're on high alert, combing the beach for intruders. Proceed with caution. We're in the back of the truck. Plenty of juice for two. Hey, Reynard, tell you who they were? Now, why do I want to know a thing like that? You in the market for some inner demons, Nash? Because I'll sell you some of mine, no worries. Yeah, no, it's just we weren't supposed to kill civilians. Boss's orders. Well, maybe if someone hadn't been cheap on the chloroform, money bags here wouldn't have woken up in the van and torn Alma's mask off. Then maybe he and the missus would still be alive. Just food for thought. Oh, real nice. Knock it off. Nobody's fault. Best laid plans and all that. These folks are collateral damage. No point in knowing their life story. Besides, this is Alma's operation. If the boss got a problem with our methods, he'll take it up with her. Just dig the hole and light him up. I second that. Anyway. How many is that off the kill list? Let's see. Uh, the boss took down Eugene Cobb, Milton Fitzpatrick CEO, and Thomas Cross, medium over all of them. Since the militia was formed, we've taken down five more than that. A construction CEO in Shanghai, a lady from Blue Sea Pharmaceuticals, Dan Seeger, the insurance mogul in Berlin, Barisan Martin, the retail giant, Rex Larson, the shipping king. Finally, tonight, Rupert Pierce, CEO of Dynasty Global. Kidnapping the VP's family and blackmailing him to kill his own boss. Now I'm sure has a scary brain sometimes. Yeah, the question is, what's it all good for? What's it all good for? Providence is an octopus and we're tearing off its limbs one by one. Media, shipping, farmer, now online retail. Even if they don't kill us all, Providence will spend years repairing the damage. Besides, Orson says one of their operatives is ready to deflect. Knox, the tech guy? Got them sons of bitches rattled. Sooner or later, we'll get to someone who knows the higher ups, and then whack. Yeah, unless nobody knows anything, and we're basically chasing ghosts. Shit, they're not gods, Nash. They're just clever suits. They can't be completely untraceable. If there's a weak link, and trust me, there is, the boss will find it. If the two of you don't dig faster, we'll have a crap of fan on our hands. Just saying. Ugh. way to get past them unnoticed. I suggest you cause a distraction, 47, and make it a loud one. Okay. We have a possible disturbance. Or it could just be back.
Well, it's official. New Zealand paid off. The client has given us carte blanche. Hunt down the militia by any means necessary. A week ago, Providence was a threat. How did you swing the board? The board are practical people, 47. A blank check is hard to turn down. Besides, the Shadow Client's war on Providence is causing a global panic. Someone will need to stop the militia. Might as well be us. And the man on the train? You never told them about his offer. Taking a contract for personal gain is against ICA regulations. Sodas would have been proud. Is that a sense of humor, 47? Whatever next, crying at the movies? Why are you doing this? I know what it's like to have everything taken from you. He claims to know about your past, your childhood, your memories, everything Aunt Maya stole from you. And you trust him? About as far as I can throw him. But this is our best lead in 20 years. I say it's time we break a few rules. Good afternoon, 47. Your destination is the annual Global Innovation Motor Race in Miami, Florida. After analyzing the data from Reynard's computer, the case is clear. The Providence defectors are Robert and Sierra Knox, head of robotics developer Kronstadt Industries. A visionary inventor and technological innovator, Robert Knox has spearheaded Kronstadt Industries to the bleeding edge of technological development. His equally brilliant daughter, Sierra, is not only a financial wizard, but also a fiercely competitive race car driver with a fiery temper to match. Kronstadt enjoys enormous popularity with global consumers. However, few are aware that the company is also one of the world's leading suppliers of next-gen military tech. Last year, despotic ruler Jin Po employed prototype Kronstadt drones against peaceful civilian protesters in the now infamous Tungyan Valley incident. And although it has yet to be proven, there is little doubt that the Noxes personally broke the deal, making them complicit in a war crime. It is unclear why the Noxes would betray their masters, but likely the fear of being next on the Shadow Client's hit list has pressured them to cut a deal with the enemy. Undoubtedly, with Kronstadt Industries on their side, the militia will increase their attacks tenfold. And so our contract obligates us to retire Robert and Sierra Knox and contain the damage they may inflict on Providence. I will leave you to prepare. Welcome to Miami, 47. The innovation race is on its last day and it is down to the wire. Thousands of eager fans are gathered for the final laps of this unexpectedly close race. Sierra Knox is expertly piloting her red Kronstadt car. Her father, Robert Knox, roams the nearby Expo building where Kronstadt is showcasing its new prototype car. The Kronstadt RK Mark III has seen fierce competition from the Chinese Kowoon Heavy Industries' new racer. Moses Lee, CEO of Kowoon, has taken a dominant lead and looks invincible. Sierra Knox will need to risk it all if she wants to win for the third year in a row. The stakes are as high as they can get. This will just take a sec, sir. Oh, 
Okay, let's go, sir. Thank you. Don't forget, the secret of endurance racing is to keep that car going until the end. This race is not over until the clock ticks down. Check out the food vendors, okay? Right there on the map. Sorry, but I don't have so much right now. I just saw a fight downstairs by the garage. Oh, it Some looks like the are just Damn. Feeling better? Yeah. Thanks. Doctor gave me some sort of vitamin hydration boost, normally reserved for the drivers. Fixed me, bro. Jim, it's me. I'm here now. Ready to meet up with Sierra Knox over at the hotel. Yeah, after the race. I just got to pick up the documents from my van, but um, I had to knock out a guy and steal his flamingo outfit, and now I can't find my car keys. Yeah, I know it's dumb. I think I lost them in the scuffle, but the real mascot is still over there. If I don't get them, I've got no evidence. Bye-bye money. I don't know. I, I, I need to figure something out. I'll talk soon. A disgruntled Kronstadt employee has acquired some dirt on Sierra Knox and intends on blackmailing her. Disguised as one of the racing mascots, he plans to meet Sierra by the old motel. Well, I always did feel that pink was your color, 47. Hey, hey, can you do me a favor? Go check if my keys are over there. The guy's crazy and I don't dare go over there, but you look pretty tough. Please. Oh, my head. Some guy jumped me. He stole my mascot outfit. Who, who would do that? Hey, yo, did you find some keys over there? Oh, man, you're a real lifesaver. Thank you. The race is entering its final lap, 47. Uh, that's not looking good. Oh, interesante. I'm telling you, himself like Miss Knox that. is I mean, going to be pissed. I did the pre-race checkup on her. And... Well, let's just say she's got a bad taste of food. <laughs> <laughs> nice outfit. Really brings out your eyes. Miss Knox informed me you'd be here. She has to make sure you brought the documents. So, did you bring the documents? I have the papers right here. Excellent. Come on in. Have a seat or something. I'll let Miss Knox know you're here. So far, so good, 47. Now. Let's see where this meeting is headed. Let's get those How you doing? 
guy here wearing a mascot outfit claiming you have an appointment with him? Wouldn't give his name. Got it. I'll let him know you're en route. Hey, Flamingo guy. Miss Knox is on her way. Grab a seat somewhere. She'll be here as soon as she can. So, mister... Hmm. I never did catch your name. Names are for friends. Very well. Straight to the point in all business. Walk with me. Where are we going? Don't worry. What am I gonna do? Kill you in broad daylight. I just want a bit of privacy here. Not about to do sensitive business like this in front of an audience. Good idea. So just to get this straight, you claimed in your email to have somehow found internal reports that show Kronstadt's involvement in the Tungan Valley Massacre. Sounds about right. Let's be clear. You and I are having this meeting because my father doesn't need to know about this. It's just another undesired distraction. I don't care if the information is true or false. I don't care if it mentions moving money from the Nexus project into Tungan Valley damage control, as you claimed in your correspondence. I do care about protecting my father, which is why you and I are now here. I see. Leave me alone for a few minutes, guys. Sure thing, Miss Knox. Uh, if you need us, just call. We're right around the corner. So here's the deal. You hand over the documents and leave, and that's the end of it. And you will do that now. Well, what are you waiting for? Hand me the documents. So here are the two possible outcomes of this meeting. One, you will leave this place and this country for good, and that will be the end of it. Everyone lives happily ever after. Two, you don't choose option one. Someone dies. Right here, right now. Which do you prefer? Not much of a choice, is it? No, not really. Goodbye. Target down. Next up, Robert Knox. Yeah, that's right, Birdman. Nobody messes with Kronstadt. You're lucky you're not extinct. No idea it was that good. Oh, it's good. It's real good. I mean, I get cravings if I don't come down here to eat once or twice per week. At one point, when I worked near here, I ate lunch here every day. But Robert Knox? He's like a big shot billionaire. It's true. I was standing in line behind him yesterday. He talked about how he loves this place to death. It seems Robert Knox paid several visits to a Bayside area food stand yesterday. The vendor, known as Florida Man, sells extremely addictive food, so we should expect Knox to return. Maybe this is a way to catch Knox away from his office.
Yo, M, it's me. Look, I need the crystal, all right? Well, I can't very well cook without it, can I now? Dressed as what? Speak up, woman. Well, then tell him to shut up. Shut up, Buster, we're talking here. That's better. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, all right. He's dressed as a food vendor. Yeah, makes sense, I guess. So he's gonna bring me the stuff? Jesus Christ, woman, it's only sugar, all right? Sugar! All right, bye, Mom. How does a drifter like that pay for a ticket? Good show, 47. Now stick around. Once the word spreads, Knox won't be long. Forty-seven, Robert Knox is on the move. If I'm not mistaken, he's heading down to the Bayside food stand selling coconut balls. That mm, is Robert so Knox, is genius trigger. inventor, black market's made. weapons dealer, and I Providence defector. Food, but I've sure got the munchies. Hello, can I tempt you with a little snack? So. What's good? Everything's to die for, Mr. Knox. Excellent. Maybe one of these. Mmm, that was superb, my good man. I'll be back for more in a little while. Uh, 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 we, we... Huh? Okay. Oh! Both targets down. Well done, 47. Head for an exit, and we'll speak again soon. when I look good. Rolling. This is Lindsay LaCour reporting from the Global Innovation Race event. The race is now finished and I... Cut. This is not working. Oh, fuck it. This is fucking ridiculous. Are people fucking stupid? Don't they know we're trying to do a job here? Let's just go. Oh, I hate these bricks. This is Lindsay LaCour reporting from the Global Innovation Race event. The race is now finished, and I've retreated back to the marina to catch a chill ocean breeze in this scalding Miami heat. The marina is where local food vendors, such as fast food and- Cut! Uh, <laughs> hey, wait a minute. You know, I have some, some mints in my pocket. You could, uh, you might wanna, you could use a mint. Cut! Let's Jesus go. fucking Christ, what am I, fucking invisible? I'm working here! Shit, shit, shit! Ugh!
Berlin. Shanghai. Montreal. We're bleeding operatives. Panic is spreading, and now we are axing our own? Knox was a traitor. He would have caused incalculable damage. And he won't be the last. This is exactly what the enemy wants. We need to fight the sickness, not the symptom. And I have just the tool for the job. Right. The Burnwood woman. Eric Soders warned you about her, didn't he? The Crusader. I can handle Miss Burnwood. Everyone hates power until you offer them some. And you ought to know. ICA speaks the enemy's language. We need them. And once we don't, <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Fact remains, we are shadow boxing. We need to know who we are up against. I was getting to that. His name is Lucas Gray, the late Mr. Cobb's head of security. Cobb was ground zero, first of our operatives to die. It had to be one of his staff, someone with military training and access to the plane. Yeah, grasping at straws. Gray is a mercenary, a veteran of every backwater tragedy you've ever ignored on the five o'clock news. Chechnya, Sierra Leone, the list goes on, but before 89, nothing. No records of any kind. Now, oh, come on. CIA, KGB, plenty of spies went dark. After the curtain was lifted, I cast a very wide net. Lucas Gray simply does not exist. <clears throat> if you're all quite done wetting yourselves with excitement, I couldn't give two shits where he came from. I only want to know one thing. How does he know about us? I swear to God, this hearts and flowers crap will get us both killed. Can't you see? Your so-called friend is working for them now. He's not the man you knew. This is his fight too, Olivia even if he doesn't realize it. Like it or not, 47 is our last and only lead on the partners. He needs to remember. He's coming for us. And unlike you, he won't hesitate. Just get me inside. Rico, I need a favor. Anticipation here is just so high. This is the place to be. The best track you'll ever see, the best group of drivers we've had in a long, long time. And how about that crowd, huh? Awesome day of racing here in Miami. Listen, Miller, I don't care about your problems, all right? I made it clear this morning that if things didn't change, I'd be off the Remember Kronstadt the team. That Half an hour later, I have to listen to Knox berate my skills as a mechanic because the roll cage interferes with the radio signals from Sierra's suit. No more. I'm done. Yes, I know you're a man short now, and no, I don't give a rat's ass about it. But tell you what, you double my salary for the entire week, and I'll come back in case Sierra decides to use that last pit stop. Mm-hmm. Well, if you decide otherwise, I'll be down by the paddock. Best of luck, Grace. Now the key here is tire man. One of the Kronstadt pit crew has quit the team in protest, and Grace Miller, the ball buster chief mechanic, is in critical need of a replacement. Why don't you step in and offer your services, 47? You're good with a wrench. 
I mean, if you're not careful, you can burn these tires off after 10 laps. It's a huge deal to manage that in this heat, and these drivers know it. Just repeat some ground rules for those of you new to endurance races. You gotta cover okay, so, uh, as much What kind of engine you got in this car? Time's up. We have our winner. Judging by the state of the car when they brought it back in, I'd say he's not in great condition. I heard a couple of the guys talking earlier. They said the car was behaving erratically that last lap before the accident. You think anyone, you know, helped make the accident happen? Wouldn't be the first time during these races. Remember two years ago when that driver from Eastern Europe got totally smashed? Someone had met with the car. That's that. Focus. Just keep me updated. You, you're the junior slip wrench who got injured yesterday, right? Suppose I am. Great, this is your lucky day. Do well and there's a bonus in it, got it? Got it. All right, everyone, look alive and get to your stations. Sierra may come in for a last minute pit stop and I need you ready and able. You, rookie, get into position. Grab your preferred tool and be prepared. Today's your day to shine, let's do this. Sierra's coming in. Everyone on your stations, now! Target down. Next up, Robert Knox. What the hell just happened? Sierra! What's happening? Barbara! I'm coming to get you, Barbara! Mr. Mack? It's Grace Miller in the Kronstadt pit. Are you watching the feed? It's Sierra. There was a, a crash. It looks bad. Real bad. We can't see her vitals. Well, Robert needs to know. That's why I called. It's his daughter. Wouldn't he want to... I understand he's busy, but she could be dead for God's sake. Fine, I'll let you handle it. Asshole. I can't believe it. Did you need anything? Is she all right? I don't know. Nobody's talking about it. I heard they completely shut off communications about the crash. It's terrible. Two accidents, both horrific. What the hell's going on? I feel like we're cursed. You think? Maybe it's sabotage. That Gawun guy? Doesn't seem likely. There was certainly no love loss between Lee and the Knox family, but to go to an extreme like that just to win? That's cold, man. Wouldn't be the first time. Remember four years ago with the Italian team? Sure, I remember. Still, turned out the driver from the Brazilian team was having an affair with the guy's wife. This is different. Almost like something's wrong with the cars, you know, on a fundamental level. Can't see how that's possible. Grace will never let anyone out on the track on a car that wasn't 100%. Yeah, it's weird. I really hope Sierra makes it. my first gig. Never been to any of these races before, but it sure is loud. I heard something about a secret demo up there. 
Hello there. I hope your team performs as well as it possibly can. I heard he's demoing. It's a beautiful vehicle, that's for sure. I understood from the briefing earlier that we're just supposed to grab him if something happens to it. No poking around the engine or anything like that. Uh, Knox is a genuine technical genius. He's really protective about his projects. Prefers to fix everything himself, apparently. Don't worry about grabbing him, though. If anything goes awry, you'll see him down here as fast as lightning. Gotcha. Robert Knox has a race car on display in the Expo building. The show staff is under strict instructions to summon him at any sign of malfunction. Apparently, Knox trusts no one to fix his car but him. Hmm. Perhaps it's time to poke around under the hood, 47. They do say one should never mess with another man's wheels. Octane booster, huh? What is that stuff, anyway? I think some of the teams are using it to increase car speed. Heard a few Kronstadt mechanics talking about it the other day. Something about Knox not wanting to use it because she wants to win on her own. Imagine that. Isn't that illegal? I don't know. Knox ordered them to put it here. So they asked me to put it here. So I just did that. Not touching it again. Sounds like a good idea. Good. I dare say this should get Knox's undivided attention. Huh. Why's the engine off? Let's just try to get this started again. Well, that doesn't sound good. Better call Knox. Mr. Knox? Yeah, it's Smith from down at the Expo. Listen, the Mark III's making some, well, just odd noises. Uh, can you come? Great. All right. Yeah, yeah, I'll be here. I swear to God, if someone's been tampering with the car, heads will roll. I need you to get in the car. Don't touch anything until I tell you. shouldn't behave like this at all. Try the engine, Smith. All right, try it now. This should work. Ah, here we are. Just a loose wire back there. Let me just reattach it. Good. Hit it, Smith. Both targets down. Well done, 47. Head for an exit, and we'll speak again soon. Central, come in. Uh, I'm here now. Nothing is really going on here, over. <laughs> Understood. Moving on. Out. That is Ted Mendez, one of the country's most influential military-grade money men. This must be connected to Kronstadt. I guess he's out to show Matthias just Well, let's just say one. she's got a bad case of intermittent explosive disorder. Poor Dr. Sorensen. First, he almost loses a patient to a seemingly harmless case of dehydration. Now he has to deal with this guy suffering from urinary retention. 
not his day. Let's just hope he doesn't somehow screw up the revitalization procedure on Miss Knox. Don't, Don't forget, forget. I know it's this just a simple injection, all about getting but given his miles track record these past it's few it's days... Much about well, the car's at least and we know who's buying us beer tonight. Ain't that the truth? truth. So, it seems Sierra Knox has jumped on the revitalization bandwagon and is scheduled for an injection of some sort. The doctor who is supposed to help her with the procedure is preoccupied with a patient who is unable to urinate. Curious situation, 47. Maybe you can speed things up. So did Dr. Oh, hello there. Just take a seat. We're, we're very busy right now. So did Dr. Sorensen manage to get Sierra Knox's phone number? I heard him arguing with that Kronstadt lawyer earlier. No, didn't have any luck. Once he's done with that other driver, he'll just have to use the intercom and call her over the PA system instead. She should be able to hear it just fine. All right. As long as it's in hand, I guess. Going into the corner. Great, Great racing. racing. Mr. Durant, I'm going to have to ask you to get a move on now. I have Sierra Knox coming in next for a post-race IV vitamin boost. I don't want to keep her waiting. I'm doing my best here, Doc. So, Mr. Durant, any luck yet? Maybe if you think about running water. Look, if you keep pressuring me, it'll never happen, all right? Click it, flip it, press it, turn it, twist it, and you're on. There is still some time to go, folks. Remember, folks, that endurance racing is all about getting your car to cover as many miles as possible. Yeah, yeah, relax, stop. I know you've got Sierra Knox coming in for that fancy IV vitamin boost. I'm doing my best here, all right? Doctor, oh, I'm so happy to see you. The race is entering its final lap, 47. I, um, I forget your name, sorry? Dr. Reaper. Oh, yes, of course. Well, whenever you're ready, you can page Miss Knox. I know she's very eager to get her vitamin boost. I'll prepare for her arrival. Paging Miss Knox. Paging Miss Sierra Knox. The doctor will see you now. Excellent work, 47. Sierra Knox should be on her way to the emergency area. Miss Knox, I'm ready for you. Let's do this. All right, Doug. Where'd you want me? Miss Knox, come on in. Have a seat and relax. So, what's on the menu? Something that'll take care of this hideous pain in my neck, I hope. I promise. Once I'm done, you won't feel a thing. So, what's in this thing anyway, Doc? Mostly floral extracts, hemlock, belladonna, aconite. It's designed to be fast and efficient. Fast and efficient. I like that. Wait, wait belladonna? Isn't that poisonous? Yes. 
Should I be concerned? I'm not. Just relax. It'll be over soon. Hey, Doc. Hope we don't need you today, huh? Hey, you know what? I do feel refreshed. Thanks, Doc. My pleasure, Miss Knox. Uh, I... I don't feel... I don't feel well, Doctor. Don't worry. It'll be over soon, Miss Knox. <laughs> Target down. Next up, Robert Knox. That is Ted Mendez, one of the country's most influential military-grade money men. This must be connected to Kronstadt. Phil, it's Ted here. Just returning your call before heading over to the Expo building to meet Knox for the new combat android presentation. No, not yet. I'm letting him stew a little. The guy's a genius, and you know what they're like. Desperately lacking any discipline or respect for other people. Last time I tried to have a meeting with him, he had me sitting in a room for four hours before canceling. I'll head up when I feel like it. All right, I'll call you after the presentation. Speak then. Ted Mendez, a defense funding consultant with the US military, is scheduled for a private demonstration of a new Kronstadt robotics project. Sounds like a way to get up close and personal with Robert Knox, 47. and stay off. Mr. Mendez, good to see you, sir. The demonstration is scheduled to take place on the upper floors. Please feel free to use the stairs right over there. Enjoy, sir. Mr. Mendez, right this Hello, way, sir. sir. Have a lovely day. Been nice to be able to break a story like that on my first run. Dream on, pal. Oh, uh, hello, HR? Yes, it's Finn Wheeler down at the Bayside Center. Uh, listen, I realize this may sound trivial, but the Fountain View soda dispenser has been on the fritz since we moved in. I can't work without my energy drinks, and I have been forced to bring my own. Yes, that's right. But here's the problem. Mr. Knox and his Oxford Oxford. Pretty impressive. Spec-wise, it's miles above anything I've seen pitched before. Not even the Chinese have anything as promising. Collecting pictures know. of celebrity entrepreneurs now, 47? Hmm. I understand what are you thinking? Certain types of workers with robots, but this seems like he's effectively trying to replace everything. That's what I love the most. 
How's this for a pitch? We at Kronstadt love humanity, but let's face it, flesh is old, analog, limited. At Kronstadt, we're focusing on the digital human to bring humanity to a connected world full of possibilities. With robotics and artificial intelligence, humanity becomes more powerful than ever before, limitless. Man, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Welcome to Creepy Town, population Kronstadt. Nobody's gonna buy into that. Well, we don't specifically state that we want to replace humans with robots. Really? McMasters wrote this last night, and I quote, the replacement of the human workforce with a robotic one is not only practical, it's ethical. <laughs> it just makes plain sense. The Palace Enhanced Servitor series will, in the span of a single human generation, have evolved nine times. In 20 years, it will have mastered everything we as humans have accomplished in the last two centuries. The development potential is just staggering. <laughs> Well, yes, all right. Maybe we need to tone that down a little. You know what I was thinking? How the smell of those tacos they're selling down by the water is driving you nuts with hunger? No, no, that wasn't it. I was thinking about what might actually happen when Knox and the engineers integrate advanced artificial intelligence into those robots. Like that Kai project they launched in Japan. I enjoy the prospect of tacos a lot better than what you're suggesting. Shoving something that advanced inside an indestructible metal shell sounds like a chilling proposition. Asking us to somehow sell it is beyond my current skill set. Tell me about it. I know the boss really likes the whole let's change the face of war motto of the campaign, but it's just scaring the heck out of me. I mean, he wants the robots to actually interact with people in the field, switching out the faceplates to reflect their current assignment. What if they screw it up and a thing puts on the urban sniper plate instead of the human language interpreter plate? I know. You think there would be some tighter restrictions around what a guy like Knox gets to play around with? I hate to wake up one morning with the soundtrack of the Terminator feeling oddly relevant. It's not great. Anyway, let's get on with it. Those sales lines don't write themselves. You're no Dolores. I have to say I'm proud of you. So, I'm hearing rumors on the corporate grapevine. Mr. Mendez. Sir, get out of my way. Uh, Robert, it's Derek. Mr. Mendez is here already. He's eager to get on with the demo. You should come by as soon as possible. How are you? Ah, Ted, good to finally see you. Guess traffic was rough. Ah, never mind. Let me show you everything. I'm gonna say something provocative now, Ted. War is going out of fashion. It's dirty, it's just plain bad PR. Nobody wants to exchange their children and loved ones for flags and medals anymore. The glory is gone, Ted. But luckily, Kronstadt has a solution for that. Imagine this, android infiltrators operating in the field, disguised and fully embedded, ready to strike at a moment's notice indestructible robotic operators who can infiltrate the deepest sanctuary of any adversary, striking an unseen fatal blow, a surgical tool for a blunt world. Imagine an army of them, fully equipped android medics, seeking out wounded servicemen and injured civilians, bringing them to safety or patching them up then and there. Android pilots delivering payloads deep inside enemy territory with uncanny precision and minimal collateral damage. All right, Mendez, it's very straightforward. Let me show you. I just pick any of the pictures on the desk, then I use the scanner to upload the biometric data, and Palace will do the rest. Target acquired, WB. Obviously, the final system won't rely on you manually feeding it biometric data. This is still a prototype. This is a pivotal moment in modern conflict solution, Ted. Palace is entirely foolproof. All you need is to pick a photo from the table and scan it just like ah, I showed you. Hi there. It's perfectly safe. Go ahead, make my day. Target acquired. Robert Knox. Damn. Oh shit. 
Yes. Both targets down. Well done, 47. Yeah, Head for an exit, and we'll speak again soon. So, I'm gonna run over and play around with hey. the pyrotechnics for the podium ceremony. What? No, you can't fool around with that. We didn't get the replacement pressure valve, so I literally duct taped everything together just now. You could fry everyone on stage if the pressure gets too high. But Rudder asked me to test it. If he asks, just tell him I've got it under control. Whatever you do, don't touch the setup. Okay, gotcha. Maxwell Rutter, the race chief coordinator, is worried that the powerful new pyrotechnic system connected to the victory podium is not exactly tamper-proof. Sabotaging it could have devastating consequences. Well, what are you waiting for? How are you, sir? Good to see you, sir. This race is all about getting some miles under the hood. It's as much about the car's stamina and technology as it is about the driver's talent. Forty-seven. The race is over. Sierra will be coming off the track any time now. I like your thinking, 47. With the safety off, someone could make the podium pyrotechnics fire up rather explosively. We still have a little time before our champion reaches the podium. Let's hope it's not like last year when a streaker delayed the celebrations. Keep your clothes on, folks. Please. Sierra, you beautiful bastard, you did it. Becoming. Lee never knew what hit him. I don't think I've ever seen you drive this well. Yeah, that was pretty amazing. 
I have to head over to the podium to accept the trophy. Join me? Oh, of course. Come on, girls. Just continue down on your left. Well done. Just go straight ahead. Oh, Miss Knox. Miss Knox. One moment, please. Yeah? Lindsay LaCour, we're setting up for a quick post-race interview. Just want to make sure you're okay with that after your podium moment. Sure, sure, all right. I'll, I'll come by afterwards. Wonderful. Thank you. Oh, and congratulations on the victory. Thanks. Podium is just after the passage. So, what's the plan for the rest of the day, Sierra? I think I saw Heidi over at the lounge. Maybe we can hit up the town and try out the local cocktail scene. I can't. I have work. Oh, come on. You've been racing for two days straight. I'm pretty sure your dad can handle running Kronstadt for a day. My father has important things to do, and so do I. I've got a meeting and a bunch of calls to take care of. Wow, sounds so exciting. Well, I do have one thing. I'm not quite done with Moses Lee yet. Ugh, not that thing again. Oh yeah, that again. Ugh, I'm absolutely starving. Hopefully this winning ceremony won't take too long. Relax, darling. This is Sierra's no. moment. She's worked to hard to win this, and we should support her. Mm, I guess you're right. This is the what? Ninth time she wins a race or something like that? Unstoppable. I'll be very interested in reviewing the technical evaluation of the car. I hope everything is in order. It would be a real shame to have to re I'll be very interested in reviewing the technical evaluation of the car. I certainly hope everything is in order. It would be a real shame to have to retract the victory. Embarrassing, even. You be sure to do that. I'm sure you can entertain yourself with that late at night while the rest of us party. Now, shall we get on with this? <sighs> I suppose we must. I'll go up first. Once you get the cue to go on, you come up. Please don't linger. I'll make a small announcement and you pick up the trophy. We'll have it filled with champagne, but it's just for show. Try not to embarrass yourself by drinking from it like a dog, as I've heard you like to do. Huh. Just do your job, Rudder. Don't worry about me. Run up there like a good boy and announce me. Knox, don't want him to in, because you're not going to really... It's not really... It's killing me. Of course I am. Car drove you to victory, didn't it? Wouldn't miss the celebrations. Uh, how's the suit? The suit? Uh, yes. Fine. I, comfortable enough, I guess. Good. I have some ideas of how to make the sensor smaller. And the car handled well, I take it? Sure. Yeah, it drove me to victory, as you said. Indeed it did. The new AI steering routines work miracles on its performance. Yeah. So I, I have to go accept the trophy now. Right. Well, have fun with that. We'll talk again later in the week. Sure, Dad.
Target down. Next up, Robert Knox. Let's just check the uplink here. Huh, nothing. Must be the dish itself. Best go check it out. Ah, there's my car with seat. Both targets down. Well done, 47. Head for an exit, and we'll speak again soon. Our Providence contact has shared the identity of the Shadow Client, a former mercenary and bodyguard by the name of Lucas Gray. His past is a black void, but our analysts are digging deep. Meanwhile, we've had a breakthrough of our own. Comparing the malicious attack patterns with global shipping and transportation routes, we've figured out how Mr. Gray and his paramilitaries move around the world undetected. They're using the distribution network of the Delgado Cartel, Colombia's biggest drug manufacturer. Clearly, Gray must have struck a deal with the Delgados. Consequently, if we can cripple the cartel, we can severely limit the militia strike range. But to do so, we need to slay a three-headed serpent. Sociopathic cartel head Rico Delgado and his two closest lieutenants, PR guru Andrea Martinez and servant chemist Jorge Franco. With equal parts guts and guile, Rico Delgado runs a thriving billion-dollar criminal empire. The word is, the brutal and volatile cartel head is hell-bent on becoming the number one drug lord in the world. To achieve this, Martinez, a childhood friend of Delgado's, has been buttering up state leaders and decision makers, paving the way for an expansion of the Delgado logistics network while the brilliant but aloof and antisocial Franco has been hard at work developing a new type of super cocaine. So, three of Colombia's most infamous crime lords inhabiting a decidedly hostile environment. I will leave you to prepare. Welcome to Colombia, 47. The remote village of Santa Fortuna awaits you deep inside the Colombian rainforest. An iron-fisted Delgado cartel rules over the village and its surroundings. Security around Santa Fortuna and the closed-off cartel compound is extremely tight. Armed Sicarios patrol the streets of the village, ready to enforce harsh punishments to those who do not comply. Rumors persist of hidden transportation cave systems connecting the village, the cartel compound, and the hidden coca fields beyond. It is a rare occurrence to have all three cartel leaders present in the village at the same time. Expect that all targets are protected by scrupulous killers armed with automatic weapons. Rico Delgado inhabits his fortified mansion on the outskirts of the village, while Andrea Martinez can be found in her village office or around Santa Fortuna itself and Jorge Franco is engaged in development of a new drug in his field laboratory. Happy hunting, 47. One of those days. Ugh. 
Your inappropriateness knows no boundaries. You really need to leave. This is exactly what happens when you compromise quality and instead get cheap knockoff products. Gosh darn it. Hey, what's up, man? Sit down, relax. The universe will correct itself again, right? I don't know, man. I've been like smuggling this cocaine souvenir around the world, right? I need to get it to this dude, uh, Franco. But man, it, it broke. It's supposed to be in one piece when I deliver it over by some cave entrance behind the pharmacy, but it broke. Bummer, man. Maybe just glue it together? I don't know. I think it's gonna ruin the taste test. This Franco guy is like a bloodhound, but, you know, with taste, not smell. So, a drug dealer from Sapienza has been testing a new method for smuggling Delgado brand cocaine into Europe, baking the substance into souvenirs coated in a special anti-drug detection paint solution, the dealer has been traveling the globe, testing the method. However, he accidentally broke the souvenir on arrival and needs to mend it before going to see Franco. You know? Yeah, man, that's too bad. I'd still try the glue, you know? running. Nice day. Oh yeah, if you want to come through, I'm going to have to pat you down, cool? Just relax. You'll be in your way again in a second. All right, good job, my man. Thank you. All right. 
Mr. Franco is expecting you in the caves below. I'll just radio the others. Hang on. Groovy. It's Carlos. Tell Franco his guest is here. All right, come with me. Try not to get lost, okay? Place is kind of dangerous. I'll do my best. Interesting to see how many of you backpacking types are willing to bend your morals for a little cash. We're only to the soft tracks. I'm surprised to see you working for Franco. I do what it takes to get what I need. Ah, you're expected. Have a seat. Franco's on his way. Ah, so, despite an annoying delay, it's finally here. Let's have a look. It got through customs without a problem, we hope? I had no issues. Excellent. We're not sure whether this will pass the taste test, but that remains to be seen. Follow us, please. Nice one, 47. And now for Franco to sample his handiwork. I don't think we can hold this down for long. Franco confirmed down. Nice work, 47. the biggest celebrity tattoo artist in the world. Maybe he's here to see that Delgado guy we've been hearing about? Sounds like he's got money to spare. Ooh, could be. So, Pea Power, celebrity tattooist of Tattoo Torment fame, has come to Santa Fortuna, presumably to work his magic on Rico Delgado, a known ink enthusiast. Sounds like an invitation to the mansion, 47. Are you feeling expressive? I wish I could afford one of his. Ah, his work isn't that impressive. All he really seems to be doing is touch-ups and cover-ups of botched work on that reality TV show of his. Improving on stuff that looks like crap probably isn't too hard, you know? the news about the Morenos. 
How they had 15 guys in lockup in Mala, and yet all of them work two hours. That is P Power, real name Paul Powers, celebrity tattoo artist and reality TV star. Hey, ¿qué pasa? Just browsing. Dexy, Dexy is. Dexy, Dexy, damn it! Can you hear? Oh, this damn music! Dexy, hey, hang on, I'm heading outside. Just browsing. You have to get me the hell out of here. I'm stuck in some tequila bar in the middle of nowhere. I can't get out. Dexy, send help. That's nice. That power guy? Hang on, man. I hope you don't mind, but we need to frisk you. If you want to come through, I gotta punch you down. Understand me? Ah, You're senor, entering the lion's den, 47. Step, Tread carefully. Down, huh? Practically everyone here is dangerous. Not least, Rico Delgado himself. All right, Mr. Powers. Follow me to the house. Mrs. Delgado wanted to meet you. She's a big fan. She'll take you to Rico afterwards. Uh, the celebrity tattoo guy is here. So famous tattoo artist, huh? I put some ink on skin as well in my time. Of course, most of that was in prison, and not always on people who appreciated the work. You know how hard it is to tattoo traitor on a guy's forehead while he's squirming around on the ground like a worm? Not easy, let me tell you. Interesting story. Thank you for sharing. I know. That is Catalina Delgado, wife to Rico Delgado for the past oh 11 God. years. Rico Sir, no. It's really you, Pipawa. It's such an honor to meet you. I just love your show. That episode where you tattoo the heart on the arm of the dead dying policeman while they're administrating CPR, <laughs> it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. A great moment. I cherish the memory to this day. Ah, oh, see. So, Rico has this tattoo on his neck and he insists it's supposed to be based on a photo of me. I'm not a fool, Mr. Powers. My nose never looked like that, not even before the operation. And sure, I've had a few ticks done here and there, but nothing as drastic as that. I want you to make it look like me, not some young skank. I'll do my very best, Mrs. Delgado. Ah, oh, Chico, let me just grab a quick selfie with you, all right? Sure, why not? Yay! <laughs> Just look this way. Oh, can see. Wow, we look so good together. This is great. Hey, 
Maybe. So hey. far, so good, 47. Now to leave your mark on Mr. Delgado. So, this is the famous P Power, tattoo artist to the stars. Huh. You don't exactly look like you do on TV, do you? There's something different about you. Cariño, don't insult our guest. He's obviously not been sitting in a stylist chair for days, but this is P-Power. Who else would it be? Well, what about those cheekbones? The guy on TV didn't have cheekbones like that. Hey, Rico, enough. You know they fix all that in post-production. Just let the man work. OK, fine. Whatever you say. OK, I'm ready. Let's get this thing fixed. Cut! I swear to God! Oh, stop being so grumpy, Rico. I find your constant photography very annoying, dear. You're being such an ass right now, Rico. Whoa, hey, Rico, don't worry. I've got this under control. Hey, tattoo guy, I'm watching you. One wrong move, y la vas a pidiendo. You hear me? Calm down, all right? Everything's okay here. Better safe than sorry, boss. You're making me nervous, Jose. Put that thing away. Afraid I can't do that, Patron. This person might get the jump on us. You need to keep still, Mr. Delgado. I wouldn't want to stab you by accident. You heard the man, Carolina. Leave us now. Fine. I did your way. But that tattoo better look exactly like me when you're done with your new BFF, Rico. I need you to calm down a bit, Jose. He's a strange Rico. I don't like his face. Put the gun away. I'm fine. No, 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 no. I'm not willing to take any risks here, Jefe. Hey, Jose, I need you to leave us alone now. You're too wound up right now. You understand? All right, boss, all right. But I'll be back in a little while if I don't hear from you, Cuevon. Oh, finally. Some peace and quiet. Can I finish my work now? <laughs> do what you do best, man. You got it. Rico Delgado has been eliminated. Nicely done. Man, you done already? Well, he certainly Feels like you looks. Just uh... Walked in a minute ago. Time flies when you're having fun. Martinez wants to talk to the shaman so urgently. Why doesn't she just get him herself? She's got a lot in her mind. The construction of the new plant has been stalled for days now because of what they found there. She needs him to cleanse the place. But why do I have to go get him? Ha! <laughs> Scared of getting aroused from touching all the poisonous plants he grows in there? Or ruin your precious complexion or something? You better watch your attitude, Parse. So? Andrea Martinez wants the local shaman to do a spirit cleanse at the construction site. She's ordered her Sicarios to summon him, against his will if necessary. I suggest you get involved, 47. After all, getting rid of bad influences is what you do best. The Tai Tai has great spiritual power, and I respect our traditions enough not to screw around with that. Comprende? Well, parece. If you don't get him over the construction site, Martinez will feed us to the piranhas. Stay busy here, Caprón. Get that in, yo. Grace the moment, friend. 
Let the sounds and lights of your surroundings caress your minds and spirits on this journey. Another traveler finds his way here in search of a spiritual release. Come on in, my friend. I feel free to join us. Everyone is an equal in the eyes of the spirits. Wow, they're really out of it. The brew wow. has they're transported really out of them to a place of tranquility and calm. It's a spiritual space for meditation and learning about oneself. You will see once you try. Yeah, but I mean, they're like completely still. They perceive other things. Their senses no longer register their physical surroundings, but rather the spirit world, which is all around us. Freaky. <gasps> yeah, hey. Uh... Yeah, so, no. The color's all wrong. You know, I, I did a lot of reading up on this thing before coming here, and all the potions in the pictures were more, you know, red. Yeah, red. Yes. All right, then. around again. Is that? There you are. Where'd you go? Had to change into something more comfortable. <laughs> oh. oh, crap. I don't feel so good. Where are the bathrooms? Looking good, man. Good Looking to good. see you here. Germana sent his regards. Well, well. The famous shaman decides to show up after all. I'm pleased to finally put a face to the myth. I was beginning to think you didn't exist, what with your not replying to any of my inquiries. I've been looking forward to meeting you, Miss Martin. All right. I need you to get over to the construction hand. site on the outskirts of the village. Oh. The workers there uncovered a pile of old bones oh. and they've taken the opportunity oh. to grab some oh. undeserved oh. recreational time. I need you to go over there as soon as possible and wave your magic wand or do an interpretive dance or whatever it is you do. I can do that. You can walk with me if you don't know the way. Otherwise, I'll see you there. Just don't take too long. I'm an important person and have many oh. things to do. I will not wait around. Very well. Wow, 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 wow. I, that's not the way. Hola, Taita. I'm so pleased to see you in our villa. Taita, uh, my father told hello. me of the purification ritual you performed on him last week. He's never looked better. The shaman is here for the cleansing ritual. Taita, so good to finally have you here. 
You have been sorely missed. Happy to be here. So, uh, here's the problem. We're digging some holes for the foundation work, and we come across these, well, bones, I guess. Turns out they're human, and the workers seem to think they're part of some old grave. Sounds likely. Yeah. So now, they're on strike. Won't we'll work until the site is cleansed. But this is where you come in, you know? You think you can, you can help us out? I'll do my best. Excelente. Thank you so much. Muchísimas gracias. All right, Taita. The sage is all yours. Cleanse away. Thank you for your spiritual leadership and guidance today, The site Taita. is clean now. Taita, muchas gracias for helping us settle down the spiritus. Spirit. Taita. It was a beautiful ritual. Excellent. A beautiful ritual. I could genuinely feel the spirits bless the worthwhile endeavor we are pursuing here. They're at peace now. Expertly moved onto the afterlife by your Taita. I am confident this is the end of it. Bueno, muchachos. Time to get back to work. Let's warm up the new cement mixer. That beauty will cover up any human remains in seconds. Nobody will ever disturb the dead down there again. Good. Nice work, Taita. Now that you're done here, you can head back to your hut, I suppose. Or you can stay here with your devoted followers and hang out. Either works for me. Just be careful. The machinery here is dangerous. Nicely done. Looks like the foreman is going to tour the site and show some of the machinery to Andrea Martinez. This might be your chance, 47. I am eager to get this site back on track, Mr. Rodriguez. I trust you know what is at stake here. Si, sí, Señorita Martinez. I'm very much aware. I will drive the men hard to get things done in time. Excellent. Mr. Delgado needs to have the plant up and running very soon. It's vital for the business. I understand. Gracias for helping us settle down los espíritus. Espíritus. The workers are not aware of the true purpose of the plant, correct? That is correct, Senorita Martinez. They believe it's a water treatment plant, as does everyone in the village. Of course, part of it will function as that. And the um, large-scale drug manufacturing section? How are you hiding that from them? We rotate workers on a regular basis, bring in contractors from Bogota and use trusted people. Everything is leak-proof. Good. It's important to me that the villagers believe this is for them. Como no, Señorita Martinez. Enjoying the break? I hope you realize there are consequences to this sort of behavior. You! Why are you just standing around? This thing will not build itself. Your families depend on you working so they can eat. 
This isn't helping anyone. The Delgado business is trying to help the village grow by building a new water treatment plant. And this is how you thank them? By doing nothing? I noticed some overtime requests, Mr. Rodriguez. It makes me wonder, since the workers have been idle for a week. Well, the local ones have, yes. The high contractors have been constructing a lot of the building parts off-site, however. To make sure we hit the deadlines, I've asked them to work on it. I see. Hey. All targets neutralized. This should paralyze the cartel. Excellent work, 47. Now head for an exit. Bloody hell. There's been an accident. Someone get help. Okay, that's it, I guess. Ready. Back in and back in. Okay. Sorry. What a terrible way to go. Say what you will about her. This is a real tragedy. Ay, Dios mío. I can't believe she's dead. I wonder what will happen now. That was horrible. Shame to see her go out like that. But you live rough, you often die rough. I wonder what Rico will do now that the uh, dragon lady. successful. Tactical targets neutralized. Militia transport network disabled. Location of primary target unknown. Team chasing several leads. End message. Encrypt and send. source checks out. We can prove the board knew about the chemical leaks. We'll have grounds for a retrial. It won't make a difference. They're too powerful. They're not the devil, Nancy. Just a company. They're not above the law, don't you see? This is bigger than James. Those bastards killed 80 people. And they got away with it. Think about what that means. No one's untouchable. No one's untouchable. Diana! Coming!
got what we came for. Move out. So, the ever-classy Rico Delgado has commissioned a statue of himself to adorn the village square. Today's unveiling ceremony will feature a local band, and Rico Delgado will attend in person. I suggest you take a closer look, 47. This should be a unique opportunity to engage Delgado outside the walls of his compound. Uh, uh, did you see the poster? Huh? Rico what? Delgado coming down to us dirty villagers to unveil some ridiculous statue? Sure. I was at the bar last night and the band were really good, both with the music and the drinking. But my husband told me nobody's seen them since. So that's why Martinez and the Delgado Sicarios are running around like hellish chickens. Must grind her gears to finally not have things go her way. I'm sure they're fine. Probably just passed out somewhere, you know? Martinez will find them. She always get in her way. Don't patronize me. Born to be fine. Does that foundation look entirely stable to you? Well, I'm not Mason, but no. No, it doesn't. Looks to be a little crumbling around the edges. Kind of like Rico, eh? <laughs> know what I'm saying? Start you loco. Don't talk about the boss like that, or you will go straight to the hippo holding Ben. Uh, time to go water the roses. I'll be right back. Yeah, you practically finished the whole damn barrel single-handedly. Maybe not the greatest idea, Bessie. Eso. You heard the news about the money. How they had this thing I did lock up in the mall. All of them were two hours. Oh, yeah. So how about Luisa and that new dress of hers? Doesn't leave much to imagination, unless, of course, you have to imagine that she did not do this. I cannot have lost. Maybe I get a little bit of life. Oh, my God. That's so good. Dios me or that hurts. I've seen worse. You you shut your head? You crazy guy. <laughs> oh well, time to go on stage, I guess. But hurry up. Somebody, eh? So I'm told. Hey, did you see Pablo? That's what I saw him, the idiot was trying to steal a tuk tuk behind the bar somewhere. He can't drive for shit though. I uh, hope he's okay.
Ay, Dios mío. Ay, my head. Mm, what a party. Looks like it. Holy shit! You shaved your head? Amigo, you do the craziest things. It was time for a change. Oh, by the way, did you catch Raul? He talked about trying to take the midnight bus. That crazy fool didn't have any money. He must be by the cliffside. That's what's holding our country back. upon you all. This is a day of celebration and joy. Today, the Delgados present to you a gift unlike anything you have ever seen. Remember, we are here to help you. And from now on, the watchful and caring eyes of the cartel will be upon you day and night. We will protect you from the corruption of the big city and the crooked government. Rico Delgado, has promised me just this morning to step up and become the patron saint of San Fortuna. So, as we wait for him to descend, take a moment to feel in your heart the natural yes. gratitude and pride that comes from such a promise. Yes. You will, now and forever, be under the wings of the Delgado Cartel. Yes. We will guide you and protect you and care for you were our very own Nicely team. done, 47. So, Poetic justice coming up. It is my immense pleasure to present to you the benefactor of San Fortuna, the oh. lion of Bogota, the man who has taken it upon himself to destroy corruption and evil in this proud nation of ours. A man whose only concern is for the welfare and safety of this glorious village and all of proud Colombia. I give to you Rico Delgado. My dear, wonderful, grateful people of Santa Fortuna, it brings warmth to my heart to see you here today. For years, decades, we have struggled against the oppressive forces of the outside world. For years, the Delgado Cartel has been a bulwark against those who seek to do harm to you all. Well, today, we celebrate this struggle and the victories we have earned. Today, I grant you this symbol of freedom and rebellion. May it forever light your days and nights with hope of greatness, and serve as something to aspire to. All of you can become as me one day. Drum roll, please. Rico Delgado has been eliminated. Nicely done. Nothing here.
Did you hear Javier stole the love letter Hector Delgado wrote for Martinez? Had to jump out of a window before Hector discovered him. I think he hurt his leg in the process. Yeah, I heard. He even passed the letter around the basement bar at the party last night. Weird to think Hector and Martinez used to be an item. I mean, he's batshit crazy. She's so hyper luxurious. She can't even stand to be in her village mansion for too long. Talk about an odd couple. Yeah, I love to see her face if she ever found a letter, though. Rumor has it, she hates him. That's my impression as well. Sad for Hector. He's still crazy about it. Huh. Rico Delgado's brother Hector is trying to win back his old flame, Andrea Martinez. Apparently, Hector has authored a rather slushy love letter. For one of the Sicarios foolhardily stole it from Hector's room during last night's party, I suggest you acquire that letter, 47. From what we know about Martinez, a declaration of love from Hector is bound to provoke a reaction. If I ever do decide to get that private tattoo, I would like it to be... Terminado. A nice guy anyway. I have a letter Don't from Miss Martinez. All right, let me see that. Is that from Hector? I wouldn't know anything about that. Well, let me enlighten you. Hector Delgado and Andrea Martinez were an item once. Explosive and deadly. Things did not end well between them. He wants them to get back together. She wants them to go to hell. She's not accepting letters or gifts or anything from him. And... Neither am I. You put it on her desk yourself if it's so important to you. Fine, but doesn't Something's got set off. Making a shitty noise. I'm taking a look. Well done, 47. This should be good. not clear? Yes, Mr. Martinez. Very clear. I don't know how that happened. Well, make sure it doesn't happen again. Burn everything that even remotely smells like that idiot. Got it? Yes, Mrs. Martinez. Ah, to hell with it. Let's see what that fool has to tell me.
Let's see what he has to say. My, Hector, you romantic fool. I had no idea you still felt this way. Maybe... Hmm. But has he really changed? One thing to say all these things, these wonderful things. Another is to have actually changed. We did have some good times, Hector, it's true. But you're just too dangerous. A loose cannon. I can't trust you to do right by me. And yet I do feel some of those old emotions as well. No. No, I can't do this. This has to end. Better to let this letter and your words end up as food for the piranhas than let my heart end up there. We're through, and I will have none of this. All targets neutralized. This should paralyze the cartel. Excellent work, 47. Now head for an exit. My husband nearly lost his arm when that winch broke, but I think he's on the mend now. He got lucky, I guess. So what happened? He says it's better if I don't know. The Delgao cartel is very sensitive around it. Some sort of secret project. I think they're building something big down in the caves. So, an employee of the Delgado cartel was injured while working on a secret project in the caves beneath Santa Fortuna. Sounds intriguing. I suggest you locate this man's house, 47. Could be a chance to access the heart of the Delgado cartel. The problem is he's essential to the project, and now we have sicarios hanging around our house. They want him to go back as soon as possible. Sure sounds like you have a lot on your plate at the moment. Tell me about it. I've got to go home and finish the washing. I'll see you tomorrow. Sick of this shit, man. Come out, let's get back to work, all right? Let's go. Hey, you. You're that Mateo guy's wife, right? Mr. Delgado is very interested in learning more about the status of his health. How's he doing? Still alive, I hope. No thanks to you and your lousy safety. My husband was almost killed down there. I don't care. Mr. Delgado wants him back to work ASAP. Tell your husband to go to the bar to get the new key for the secret entrance. Got it? Fine, I understand. He'll be there when he's recovered. Good. You're back. Where'd you go? I think there's a sicario outside. I had to go shopping for groceries. And don't worry about him. I talked to him. And? He told me he'll be waiting for you at the bar. I wash your uniform as well. It's out back. But get some sleep first, all right? See, si, see, si. all right. Good idea. Look, Mateo, I'm stressing out over the sicarios hanging out here. I can't keep stalling them, you know. Amor, I almost died. They can't finish the project in the caves without me, so I need my rest. My arm will be better soon. I'm sorry, Matteo. I'm just exhausted. Since you can't help me out with the house, everything is just a mess. I just finished the washing out back, including your bloodied uniform. I really need to get some rest as well. I know. I'm sorry, too. Thank you. 
Dios omnipotente y eterno, hear my pleas and cast your healing sight on my poor husband so that he may be restored to full health. Protect us from those who want to harm us and let your protective hands shield my husband from further injury. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Santo. Amen. Excuse me. Oh, yeah, you're that guy who got injured, right? Didn't expect to see you back here so quickly. I heal quickly. Pues muy bien. It's nice to see you again. Here's the key to the basement. You know the way. You have to get me the hell out of here. I'm stuck in some tequila bar in the middle of nowhere. I can't get out. Dexy, send help. An underground cave system with a submarine. This must be what ties the militia and the cartel together, 47. How are ah, you? Up and about again. Good. Listen, Rico really wants to see the sub running. When you're ready to do the demo for him, let me know. I'll call him down here. So you finally installed the limiter on the engine. About time, if you ask me. I can't believe it broke the hoist. Yeah, wasn't I exactly happy to poke around that beast after what happened to the chief engineer. But it's installed now. The only way to crank the engine up that high again is to remove the limiter. And nobody will be foolish enough to do that. That Delgado guy really likes his toys to go fast, doesn't he? But is it kissy? I guess it. Well, Delgado, just calm down a little. Did you see him sneaking around down here earlier? What? Well, the sub-project is obviously important to him. You won't. And the hoist sure. is held together by... I guess he just wants to see the I'm sub sure. running. He told me to make sure we radio him the second it's ready for inspection. Let's make sure we do that, then. I'm ready for the demo. Can you call Rico, please? Okay, amigo. I'll get right on it. If it's me, I'm in the caves. The sub's ready for the demo. Come on down, man. It's looking beautiful. So what's the situation here? Is my baby ready to get her feet wet or what? There she is. What a beautiful thing to be all, huh? I don't think that I have ever in my life seen anything as gorgeous as this, honestly. This, this people is a real game changer. Well, well, well. Look who's back on his feet again. Good to finally meet you in person. I guess the accident wasn't that serious after all. I've caused worse, Mr. Delgado. <laughs> I like your style. <laughs> but enough screwing around. Get that engine pouring. I want to see how much power this baby holds. I'll do my best, Mr. Delgado. Good thinking, 47. Delgado will want to see this beast in action. Right, up close friend. and personal. You made this boat spacious enough to hold, what, 10 tons of cargo? We have increased the cargo capacity of the submersible to the required specifications, Mr. Delgado. So, theoretically speaking, how many armed men could we ship around in this thing? On top of all the drugs we'll be exporting worldwide. Around six, sir. Ten tons of pure white and six soldiers. <laughs> that is truly something else. It's like a submersible party bus, sir. Ah, the 
sound of that engine running. Smooth like a hummingbird. But you know what? I want to hear this mountain lion roar, my friend. Give him more power. Yes, sir. What's the range increase? Will we be able to go anywhere now? As long as you're traveling by water, yes. Yeah, is that some sort of engineering joke? I suppose so, yes. <clears throat> but don't quit your day job. Say so, Mr. Delgado. Now, finally, the engines. It is of the utmost importance that this sub goes as fast as possible. I can definitely say this is the fastest submarine I have ever worked on. Oh, yeah? Prove it. Certainly, Mr. Delgado. Delgado has been eliminated. Nicely done. Do your thing. Hey, if you value your city life, you, you will stop you. that right now. What? Please Shoot don't. It. Oh. Yeah. 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 I'm giving up, bro. There's no way we're finding a red box full of circuit boards out here. The pilot said he'd drop it near here. If Franco doesn't get it, his fancy cocaine processing machine won't work. Fancy machine my ass. It's a giant lump of metal inside a shed. Either way, the box is gone, man. Shit. Parzi, I think you're right. Damn right I am. So? It sounds like the Delgado's helicopter pilot dropped a package over the jungle by mistake. A red box containing circuit boards for Jorge Franco's new cocaine processing machine. Hmm. Sounds like a workplace accident waiting to happen, providing Franco can get his machine working. No look. Creo. Hey, can you start doing something in your life and go check that out, will you? Si, sí, por qué no? Mierda!
heard from my uncle who lives in Bogota that White Stallion is making a killing in there, practically destroying the entire competition. Franco's a genius. The stuff on the street now isn't even a real deal. It's the diluted version. I, I need to talk to you. Get out of bed. Why is that happening? You gotta be kidding me. Off you go. Good show, 47. Time to bring Franco down to size. Wait a minute. That sound. My machine is humming again. Ah! Oh, look at that! It runs again. Look at how smoothly it's running. This will change everything. Everything. We are suddenly overcome with joy. This is what happens when focus is applied alongside proper work ethics. This is the future, people. Well, why are they still standing here? Surely they can see the machine is working perfectly now. We have no need for them anymore. They are excused to go back home to their sad little lives in the village. That is all, guard. Please escort these people from the room. We want to be alone in here. All right, everyone. Why is it still here? Leave. All right, everyone. I wish to be alone Follow in here me. now. Why is it still here? Leave. We wish to be alone in here now. I knew the machine goes more bad than good. All right, Mr. Frank. I've checked everything. We're clear. Maybe we can find something else to do here. Someone still needs to pick the lease and trample the port. And all those Dios mío. It's... It's perfect. No longer will we have to deal with those people out there. Just this marvelous mechanical contraption and its otherworldly ability to craft perfect bricks of the purest, cleanest cocaine the world has ever seen. All right, we need to get back to work. Franco confirmed down. Nice work, 47. Good evening, 47. The militia has released a hostage tape, outing the existence of Providence to the world. This was a fatal mistake, and our analysts are tracing its origin as we speak. In the meantime, we have a lead on Lucas Gray's top lieutenant. Turns out the Delgado cartel's counterfeiting unit was creating fake IDs for the militia, and one operative in particular stands out, Wazir Kale, an infamous South China sea pirate better known by his nom de guerre, the Maelstrom. The Maelstrom and his cutthroat band of outlaws were the scourge of the shipping industry in the post-recession years. But his reign of terror came to an end with the disastrous 2014 hijacking of the supertanker, Francis King. Chinese elite forces stormed the ship, resulting in the deaths of a dozen sailors and most of the Maelstrom's crew. But Kale slipped away unseen. The Maelstrom's connection to Grey is unknown, but we believe it was he who carried out the audacious killing of a Providence CEO in Shanghai, along with two reactivated members of his old pirate gang, Vanya Shaw, a shady figure in Mumbai's criminal underworld, and Darwood Rangan, the gang's old cashier turned dodgy movie producer. Shaw, Rangan, and the Maelstrom form Lucas Gray's Eastern Cell, 
They are a crack strike team, and stopping them is our client's most pressing concern. Unfortunately, the elusive maelstrom appears to have vanished into the seedy underbelly of Mumbai, the cradle of his criminal legend, and no one knows his whereabouts or what he currently looks like. So, a bandit queen, a showbiz charlatan, and one certifiable ghost. I shall leave you to prepare. Welcome to Mumbai, 47. One of the most densely populated cities in the world, home to more than 12 million people. If you wanted to disappear and hide from the world, this vast city is perfect. The maze-like sprawling slums offer secret paths and surprises around every corner. The elusive Maelstrom knows the city like the back of his own hand. Locating him will be a considerable challenge. A place to start could be the slums where his former gang, the Crows, has recently risen from the ashes. Darwood Rangan will be easy to find in his half-finished tower, wrapping up his new film called Mumbai Hero. While Vanya Shah has ensconced herself in the overgrown remains of an old train yard. Your three targets call this labyrinthine part of the city home, so choose your approach carefully. Hey, excuse me. You know who Gregory Arthur is, right? The famous American actor? Have you seen him around the city? No? Please tell him to come see me if you do. He's got a photo shoot inside the tower and Mr. Rungan does not like to wait around. Gregory Arthur, a famous Broadway star, is apparently late for a photo shoot inside Rangan's unfinished tenement tower. Hang on. He uploaded a selfie on social media about half an hour ago. Hmm. The Mumbai Food District. He's likely still there, 47. Show on 47, I'm picking up Gregory Arthur's cell phone signal. He's close by. Interesting look, 47. Well, Darwood Rangan is at the tower expecting Mr. Arthur any minute now. No need to keep him waiting. That is you, right? Oh, I'm so glad that you're here. They're all waiting for you in the tower. Mr. Rangan wants to wrap the shoot up as soon as possible. Photo shoot, right. Once you're upstairs, you should talk to the photographer. I think he's ready for you. Good luck, sir. position will be done in no time. Okay, you're good to go.
All right, everyone, take five. I need a few moments. Mr. Arthur, over here. Mr. Arthur. I'm here. Excellent. This means we can get on with it. Good, good. just wanted to say, I absolutely loved you in Blundering Fright. I thought it was a brilliant performance in a very funny horror comedy. Oh, thank you. You know, my brother directed it. <laughs> I'll be sure to let him know you liked it. Hmm. It didn't do very well, but, but I understand it has become something of a cult classic in Europe. I think it's a misunderstood masterpiece. The camera work alone is magnificent. I mean, obviously, I'm a little tainted by my profession, but I think everything... How's everyone? Ready for the photo shoot? I know I am, so let's do this. Great. Folks, let's all get into position for the big photo, shall we? All right. Let's get this done. Show me those teeth now. This is a big moment. Final wrap. Everyone's happy, right? So? Miss Hassan, I guess you're ready for another round of Mumbai Hero soon. I've got big plans for a sequel. Hmm? Big plans. I'm sure you do. I think you will need to talk to my agent about that. Ah, agents. I never did like them. Deco, I prefer the more direct approach. Acha. Well, I'm hopefully kicking off some international roles soon. So, my availability may be limited. I see. Well, I certainly hope nothing should happen that would prevent you from pursuing your goals, Miss Hassan. Great work. Now, if we could do a few shots of just Mr. Arthur and Miss Hassan, please. Arthur and Hassan? As if they're that important. I suggest we do another round of solo shots of the guy who gets first billing. Me. <laughs> if you say so, Mr. Rangan. <laughs> I do, I do say so. Come, come, shoot. Oh, Gregory, stick around, huh? I want to talk to you when I'm done here. All right, people, get off the stage. It's time for the big guy to do his magic. Excellent, 47. It looks like Rangan wants a private word. I suggest like you humor the this. man. Hmm? That's what we're looking for right there. Great work. Oh, maybe this way is good, huh? The women really like this pose. All right, when I pull off this look, all housewives in a two-mile radius will faint automatically. That's perfect. Sure, sure. And then we done? Well, no, there's your line, and then there's the... Champagne for everyone. Well... Are main keh raha hu, great things will come from this movie, guys. Let me tell you, I've got a feeling that this one is the one that will make me famous. You know, it just goes to show that hard work and dedication is what is needed in this business, yaar. You know, I got the champagne from a movie business contact. You know, he was so impressed with the production of the film, he just insisted on sponsoring the party, yaar. Famous film director in America. Yeah, I might go there next week to talk about distribution deals for Mumbai Hero. Mr. Rangan, you wanted to see me. Ah, Gregory. Yes, yes. Come with me upstairs. I have something important to talk to you about. Okay, okay. Right. Okay. 
Gregory, Gregory. As you know, there's a lot at stake with a production like this. Hmm? Everyone needs to play ball. We're on the same team after all. But it's important to establish a pecking order. Hmm. Soon all of Mumbai will be mine. I'm sure you can imagine what that means. Okay, Gregory. I just need my friend here to pat you down. Don't want any recording devices or things like that accidentally going off. Hmm? If you want to pass sure through, I gotta understand. pat you down. Funny. My mother always said I had good hands. Said I should have been a surgeon. Thank you for your patience, sir. All right, Gregory, here's the deal. And don't interrupt me, all right? I hate being interrupted. You're a smart guy, I know that. Big deal back in America. But the thing is, I don't like you. I don't like the way you dress, the way you behave yourself around the women on set, or the way you try to steal my thunder. I'm willing to overlook all of this, Gregory, because we can make great things together. However, and this is very important, if you ever try to take my place, if you ever think you can become bigger than Daud Rangan. You're in for a world of hurt. I will destroy you and your family. Your mother, your friends, your pets, anyone and everyone will die. Hmm? Do as I tell you, and I can make you more famous than you've ever dreamed of. Cross me, and you're dead. Understood? I think I understand. Excellent. In that case, we're done here. Nice view out here, isn't it? I suppose it's a little higher up than I'm used to. True. Rats normally scurry around the sewers. Have you thought about my proposal? Little rat. I... It's a very generous offer, Mr. Rangan. But Miss Shah is clever. What if she finds out? Well, that is a decision you need to make. And you need to make it now. If you think Vanya can be dangerous, you haven't spent enough time with me. The view is even nicer from all the way out here, isn't it? Darwood Rangan is confirmed killed. No rest for the wicked, however. On to the next one.
47, our intel suggests the Maelstrom is hiding somewhere in the city slums. I've marked the headquarters of the Crows on your map. It's me. It is imperative you notify me as soon as Sargar's barbershop is open again. He is an excellent source of information, and I want to make sure he understands who he's working for now. Signal me at once when the shop is open. That is all. Achha, ek baat bata. Any idea why the boss wants to know when the barber shop is open again? Yeah. Saga, the barber, has a side business dealing in information. He basically has every snitch in the slums sharing the news with him. Boss wants him on our side. Barbie even came down to the hideout to be shown a picture of the boss so he'd recognize him when meeting him. Yeah, all the secrecy is so strange. You know the boss. This barber is tangled up in some shady business, 47. But even more interesting, he may have seen a picture of the Maelstrom in the hideout of the street gang known as the Crows. That picture would be very helpful to our cause. He says having a secret identity is key to what he does. But I honestly don't understand what he means. The guy's a bit of a mystery to me. I've got some weird noises here. I'll go see what's up. Delving straight into the heart of darkness, 47. Good luck. Hey there. A photograph and a note addressed to Sagar the Barber. This looks like a very recent picture of the Maelstrom. With this in hand, picking him out in a crowd should be possible. You could also investigate the barber shop and see what is going on there. Bertha told me the story about the Maelstrom. 47? That man there. He resembles the Maelstrom. Try to get close to him for a visual ID. Where are we heading today, sir? No, I cannot that wasn't him. Dawood Rangan donated that TV to the people of Islamis. And to hear that serpent, Banya Shah, talking about what how are you doing? You need to open the shop. There are people waiting outside already. I, I, I can't remember what he looks like. The guy the crows wanted me to provide information to, you know. Their boss. They showed me his picture in their hideout two days ago. But I was so stressed out. I thought they were going to kill me or something. I can't remember his face. What if he shows up and, and, I, and I miss him? Then you should go and explain it to them. They probably still have the picture there. What if they hurt me? What will happen to you? Or if they decide to burn down the shop like they did with that other guy with the metal recycling, I won't do it. Pavin, I 
told you we would get into trouble with this snitching business. But you had to go and earn some easy money sharing information with the gangs. This is your mess. You fix it. All right, 47. Yes, We're open for business. No we know what the maelstrom looks like and expect him to show up. Patience and shaving cream is what's on the menu now, 47. Hey, hey, Yara, come that on. That wasn't him. Do you have time no. to give me a shave or what? Please. That is not the maelstrom. Hey, any chance for a shave today? I'm sorry, sir. Not right now. <sighs> Maybe bhai. later, sir. Maybe next time. I'm afraid time I'm a little oh, busy yaar. right now. That's okay. too bad. I understand. Not at this I want moment, a sir. shave. Uh, nobody says no to me. Just you wait. 47, that man by the counter. That's the maelstrom. Well, looks like our patience paid off. How about you invite him in for a close shave? Ready for your shave, sir. Thank you, my friend. Right, I'm ready for my shave. Make it a close one. The tides are changing, my friend. Can you feel it in the air? My bones are creaking with joy at the prospect of what is about to happen. I don't feel anything, I'm afraid. Mm. You will, friend. You have an important task ahead of you, have you not? I sense that about you. Together, we will all release the shackles that have bound us far too long and rise up against those who seek to keep us down. Whether those are our friends or foes. A day of reckoning is coming, is it not? It does seem unavoidable. Indeed. The question you must ask yourself when the time comes is what side you choose to be on. But that is not for now. For now, focus on your business and what you do best, friend. That is all. I will do that. That's it. You're done. The infamous Maelstrom is dead. Very well done, 47. Just one target left. Let's bring this one home. Did you have any luck? No. That tailor is impossible. I explained to his employee that Miss Shah wants to meet with him, but he claimed that the tailor wasn't available. So you didn't just go inside and look? Only the Royal Guard can do stuff like that. 
I'm sure Misha will send someone with more hands-on experience than me. He's the only tailor in town that can make that damn dress. That's what happens when you drown all the others, I guess. It appears Vanya Shah is in the market for a dress fit for a queen. She's sent after a local tailor, but for some reason the man refuses to cooperate. A man of your impeccable taste should be able to fill in perfectly for the tailor. Greetings, sir. Can I interest you? <laughs> I don't think I know you. So, he's just hiding in there now? Yeah. Shah sent someone over to talk to him, but he refused to come down. Huh. Seems rather silly. It's a big opportunity for him. Sure, Vanya Shah is a little Greetings, scary, Can I but you in my look, fine wear? I'm sure he has his reasons. He told us to say he was out of town, but I'm not sure the guy bought it, though. Excellent. Let's find out what kind of dress a woman like Vanya Shah wants. Shah wants a cerulean dress, 47. Perhaps you will be able to source a roll of the right fabric at the local cloth market. Hey, uh. wife with a new beautiful sari. We got sari textiles in all price ranges. How much are these? Ah, you're back. Ah, my friend, you have chosen well. Now, we have the best prices here. What do you say to 140 rupees per running meter? Does that sound fair? <laughs> no? Nothing? Ah, I can see you're a man of refined taste and a skilled haggler. My kids will only eat rice tonight, but it's yours for 105 rupees then. It's a deal, yes? Wow, those eyes are really burning into me. Uh, like you're just looking straight into my soul. Okay, final offer now. 90 rupees. 90 rupees per running meter. That's my own cost. I, I really can't go lower. <laughs> Still no. Your haggling skills are something else. I'll give you that much. The silence, it's... Uh, it's terribly unnerving, to be honest. It's like you're uh, just dead inside. Like there's a vast, empty space where your emotions would normally reside. I can go no lower than 75 rupees. Really, take the offer. Please take the offer. You know what? My grandmother made these with her own hands. There's blood on the loom every night because she works so hard. The fair price is 100 rupees, so that's what I'm charging you. I serves you right for just standing there like a corpse. <sighs> okay, fine. The story about my grandmother is a lie. We both know it. Your silence is killing me here. Just, just uh, have it at what I buy it for. 40 rupees, that's it. Please, it's a fair price. You beat me. Take it. 40 rupees, okay? It's a deal. Ah, good, good. Take any of the bundles. Great. Thank you. Come again. Silk. Cotton. Ah, it's you. Did you bring the cloth for Miss Shah? Yes. I have it right here. About bloody time. Come with me. Oh, don't be alarmed, by the way. Miss Shah takes security very seriously, so the guards... I'm afraid your honest look isn't going to cut it here. 
I'm gonna have to frisk you, pretty boy. Just stand still, and it'll be over soon. Right then, off you go. Miss Shah has been dying to meet you. It's not wise to keep her waiting, you know. I won't disappoint her then. That is a good idea. She's not been happy with the other tailors. A word of warning. Just play along with her eccentricities. She can be rather dangerous. Thank you. I'll do my best. Good man. Do well and there will be a lot of money in it for you. I know. I really hope she will. I heard she likes to keep people waiting. Sometimes for days. Well, the queen does what Here she we are. We Just go through now. there, please. So, the queen is waiting for you in the garden. I'm told you have some troubles. I might be able to help you. Queen. My little girl turns 10 next week and we are trying to prepare for the celebrations. But we have been without water and power for more than eight days and it's very warm in the alley where we live. Without water and power, we cannot manage. Hmm, I see. Well, the whole city suffers under the water shortage. Your husband is dead, is he not? Yes, he is. Two years now. And your children are already working elsewhere in the city. Yes, but... You have nothing to offer me then, Mrs. Banerjee. I'm sorry, but water and power are precious assets here. I barely have enough for my own needs. You will have to make do with what you have. I understand. Thank you, my queen. Ah, the elusive dealer. Here at last. Let's have a look at the cloth you've chosen. I want to make sure the color is the right one. Yes, of course. Here it is. Excellent. Finally, some progress here. Come with me. I want you to take my measurements while you're here. Smart work, 47. Shaw will want to have privacy when measuring for the dress. I'll leave the final execution up to you. You there. Leave us. I want some privacy. Let's start the measuring right away. If you didn't bring a tape, I'm pretty certain one of the other tailors left theirs behind. You can use that. Relax your back, please, Miss Shah. I'll just measure your arms now, Miss Shah. Turn around, please, Miss Shah. I need to measure shoulder to shoulder. You've probably heard about the other dealers. How some of them ended up in the gutters because they didn't please me. This dress is important to me. Not the dress itself, but what it represents. You see, there are those out there who do not want to pay tribute to their queen. People who think the value of their lives can be measured in money. It started with one man, but these things spread like ripples in the water. Soon another, then a third. Tributes to your queen keep you alive, not money. Eventually, I will find a craftsman who understands the true value of life. Is that man you, I wonder? That's all I need, Miss Shah. I'm done here. Confirmed kill on Vanya Shah. Excellent work, 47. Mission completed. Time to find an exit. alive. I was getting ready to dispose of another dead body. 
This is my first potential audience with Queen Shah. I've got to. Okay, see. mind yourself. According to records, this was a youth correctional facility until 1962, when the estate was overtaken by an obscure Soviet research fund, the Institute for Human Betterment. Looks deserted. The place was abandoned after a fire in 89. Then, only a few weeks ago, it was acquired by an anonymous investor using cryptocurrency. It has to be Lucas Gray. He's here. Be careful, 47. The breadcrumbs were almost too easy to follow. It could be a trap. Not a trap. An invitation. And even now, you don't remember. This place. This was our prison, where father trained us, shaped us into killers for providence. Now, you don't remember. They ripped it out of you, wiped it away, but I do. I remember everything. You're a terrorist with nothing to lose. You'd say anything. I know it's difficult. You never miss your mark or question your function, but we made a pact, you and I. Do this. We both lose. There was an incident. That boy, he died. He lived. Because of you. Don't you remember his name? You know this. Deep down, you know. What was his name? Subject 6. Your name is Subject 6. And what is our purpose? To take them all down. I haven't met the new foreman yet. Is he better than the last one? Patani, yaar. He's still in the office. I know Miss Shah is supposed to meet with him on the bridge and talk about how to make you lazy workers do more. But so far, he hasn't come out. Who are you calling lazy? I work 15 hours every day. Aha, pata hai. Just relaying the words of Miss Shah. I think she's hoping this new guy will be liberal with his belt. If you know what I mean. Hmm. Vanya Shah is eager to meet the new foreman of the Mumbai laundry business. However, the foreman has taken refuge in his office, unwilling to meet with her at this time. You might be able to use this to your advantage, 47. 
great. Acha, do you know what we should do with the bedsheets from Mrs. Patel? I don't want to make a mistake. I have no idea. The new foreman hasn't had any... I don't think we'll have more luck with this God new foreman. Him, Miss Shah wants to meet him up here for a talk, oh, but he hasn't even left his office yet. Maybe he's busy next. making plans. No, I, mm, no. I think I accidentally scared him by telling him what she did to the guy who had the job before him. So my bet is, he's hiding down there. <laughs> That's funny. Poor guy had no idea what he was interviewing for, did he? Didn't even know he was going to be working for Shah. Surely those loads must be somewhere. Think, think. I can't meet Shah without them. I'm ready for my meeting with Miss Shah now. Miss Shah's been waiting for this all day. The foreman's ready to meet up with Miss Shah on the bridge. We're heading there now. Follow me to the bridge. Little people like us don't have a say in those. Oi, kapde gande hai abhi bhi. You need to put in more effort. That's not even close to good enough. Six, seven hours. It's just through here. Miss Shah will be along soon. Better get your shit together if you don't want to end up like the old foreman. Samja? So, that's the new guy, huh? How long is he going to last, you think? A week? Depends on what the Queen decides to do with him, I guess. He looks tough enough. Might last a week in the pits. Maybe even two. Maybe he's been working really hard on that report of his. Maybe she'll actually keep him on. I can't imagine that. He's been hiding inside that little office of his all day, afraid to come out. I don't think he has what it takes. Uh, the new foreman finally graces us with his presence. What do you have to report? Well done, 47. You've managed to lure Vanya Shaw out into the open. Anything could happen here. I see a lot of dead weight. Hmm. I've made a similar observation. Tell me more. Well, the objective is find the root of the problem, work to get close to it, and then eradicate it. I like your thinking. How would you approach the task you see before you? My usual method is prepare intensely, study the problem, learn everything I can, analyze all approaches. The idea is to gently nudge people to do what I want. And then, once the objective is in my sights, perfect execution. Not afraid to spill some blood in the process? Not at all. In fact, I find that happens quite often. I like you, Foreman. I think this could be the beginning of a very fruitful relationship. I aim to please, Miss Shah. You think I don't see you down there, little ants? Scurrying about at your own pace? Taking unnecessary breaks? Drinking my water? Wasting my money? You have had it easy up until now. 
but your new foreman will bring some order to this rebellious behavior. The days of slacking are over. You hear me? Huh? Uh. Oh. Confirmed kill on Vanya Shaw. Excellent work, 47. Mission completed. Time to find an exit. I beg you, please! Whoa. Great. Next round, One seem to go and we're done. Looks like the fan has been set up again. Do you know why they haven't shot it yet? Karishma threw the last copy of the script into the elevator shaft. She doesn't want to do the scene with Rangan. He still wants to do the kiss? Oh, are the nerve of this guy? Chutya, he's a creep. And Karishma isn't having it. I think she's crazy to pull something like that. But it seems to be working. Let's hope nobody finds the script then. Rangan doesn't deserve to get his way. The production of Mumbai Hero is coming to a close, but it seems there's a spot of trouble. Lead actress Charisma Hassan has refused to do a kissing scene with Rangan and has got rid of the script by tossing it down an elevator shaft. Shame. The scene features the use of a large industrial wind machine. Could be worth investigating. Magic, of course. I mean, I was I found this. Why the script? You found it. Thank you so much. Not a problem. Listen, the scene needs the fan to be running. Run over and man it, will you? Right before the scene starts, I'll signal to you to turn it on. Just make sure the safety is on and you don't go above the indicated power. I'll round up everyone. You got it. Good work, 47. Darwood is hurrying down now to act out the final scene with Hassan. Let's make sure he doesn't run out of wind. Great news, everyone. We have found the script. Get your places. We are ready to shoot. All right, everybody. Hi Mr. there. Is on his way. How are we you just doing? need to get this one scene in the can, and then that is a wrap. Karishma, here's that last line that you kept missing. I'm yours forever. Now kiss me, hero. Hmm. Right, right. So, um, what's my motivation here? Like, why kiss him? He is a foul pirate, after all. You love him. It is a pure, intimate love that has bloomed over the course of the weeks that you've spent in captivity. The evil witch queen had clouded your mind all of those years, but after he set you free, you realize that he is your true love, your hero. I don't know. It sounds kind of unrealistic to me. I mean, sure, he saved me and everything, and, and I understand why I would be grateful. But a kiss? Maybe just a firm handshake? Or a hug, even? Oh, you're full of love, Karishma. Mumbai has been rescued, set free. The pirate is... All right, people. Time to get the show on the road. I'm here, my lips are ready for the final, most important shot of the film. Charisma, 
Are you ready? As ready as I'll ever be. Okay, let's get this show on the road. Start the pan. Are jaldi yaar, fast marks come on. Yes. The witch rests in hell now, along with her assassin. You're free. It's like a veil has been lifted from my eyes. She poisoned my mind against you. I, I thought you were the villain. Her magic was powerful, but it's gone now. It's just you and me now. Goodbye. If you will have me, I will protect you. Always. I'm yours forever. Now kiss me, hero. I, I, I'm sorry. I cannot do this. Cut. Krishna, come on. Can we talk, please? Oh, fine. Fine. One moment, Mr. Rangan. We'll be right back. Krishna, look. I understand I that you scared. don't want to do this, but we really do Maybe she ate a, a batch of What can I do to make this easier for you? Look, the scene wasn't in the script originally. He wrote it in a week ago. She I was look specifically a little pale this casting. morning. There, there would Maybe not be uh, any kissing scenes. You know, a and woman. He's replaced Rangar with someone that doesn't that doesn't make me want to throw up. He's horrible. You know I can't do that. You know who Are he is, right? Are they coming back? I know, but this kissing scene is stupid. It doesn't even make sense. Nothing in this movie makes any sense other than stroking the man's inflated ego. Oh, I hate him. I won't do it. I don't care if it means I won't work in Bollywood again. He's trying to branch out, hit the Western markets. It'll be good for your international career, Krishma. And we need some sort of ending here. Yeah, well, what about you throw him off the roof or something then? Are... That would be one hell of an ending. Are... The wind! Are... It's too much! Hey! Abe, stop the fan! Are... Somebody stop... Oh, no! Darwood Rangan is confirmed oh, killed. No rest for the wicked, however. On to the next one. Wow. I've never seen anything like that in my life. He I just... cannot believe this. Well, he had such a bright I future. I'm feeling a bit crowded here. Just didn't think you would cause a lip drop like that. Oh shit, oh shit. What a terrible, terrible accident. He flew straight off the roof. My goodness. It's Lena. Look, oh shit, oh we shit. had a pretty bad accident on set, Rangan. He, he well, uh, there's the no easy way to say this. He got blown yes, off the side of the building change. by a piece Please. of malfunctioning equipment. Uh, no, we didn't get the final shot, but we did get the accident on camera. And, well, to be honest, I think it looks pretty good. Yes, I think uh, we can. In fact, I think it would be an even better ending. And I think, uh, I mean, think of the PR. Right, this would be my ticket five, to the big I leagues. Oh, sorry. I mean, <laughs> our ticket. Yep. So, are we okay to go ahead? I'll start the edit straight away. Great. Yeah, fantastic. Will you call the insurance company? Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Bye. Actually, I can. Now beat it. You thugs think you're all so tough, huh? Well, I'm not intimidated. Nelson will come and take care of you all. Mm. Until then, though, no access. There's an important meeting taking place up there. Now beat it! So true. So, armed thugs belonging to the street gang known as the Crows have evacuated a hill in the slums of Mumbai. This could be worth investigating. I hope they catch the maelstrom soon. The man's a bloody terrorist. I do not think he's even real, to be honest. Oh, he's real. Must My be the new guy. The I told him and I've told you. 
I can take care of myself. You're scaring the neighbors. Madam, समझो ना. Just following orders. Boss told us to evacuate everyone and stick around until after the meeting. That's what we are doing. So you have talked to him. Nobody talks to the boss. He left a message. When are you ready for us to give the signal? The boss. He's still up to his old tricks, isn't he? I'll be ready soon. Give me some time. Fine. Just tell the guys upstairs when. They'll raise the flag and summon him. Hmm. A letter signed Wazir. This house once belonged to the Maelstrom 47. This confirms a connection between him and the woman living here now. I know we're supposed to raise the flag when this Neha lady tells us, but how is he going to see it from the slums? I don't know. He's the Maelstrom. He's got eyes everywhere, you know. <sighs> Sometimes I think he's just a myth. A legend we tell ourselves to have something to look up to. I mean, have you ever seen him? No. But I volunteered for this in case he did show up. But it would be quite the story to tell the others, right? Yeah, sure would be. You don't want to test my patience. It's virtually non-existent. Forty-seven? Someone's coming up the stairs leading to the secured area. It looks like a man. See if you can get close to him. Boss, you're here. Where is it? Just inside here. Forty seven, that's the Maelstrom. You found him. Wonderful. Thank you. Madam, he's here. Are you ready? What? But I didn't. Oh. Okay. Was he? I... Oh, you're early. Well, uh, come on in, I guess. Uh, thank you, Neha. I have prepared something to drink out back. In the sun. Let's go out there. That sounds very nice. I'm happy to see you kept the house. It's a good house. You built it well, Wazir. <laughs> I'm sorry I left so abruptly, Neha. You know, the gangs, they eradicated us overnight. Virtually no one survived. They came here too. Did you know that? It took me months to rebuild. I was certain you were dead until I heard about this whole Maelstrom business. It was all I could do. Also to protect you. Lay low, change my name, my identity, everything about myself. Before I knew it, I had men and women gathered around me. We 
We sailed the seas for years. I have seen unspeakable things, Neha. What? Do you think things were easy here? Shall we drink then? To new beginnings. A wiping of the past and a chance to start again. It's a nice dream, I suppose. Neha, a storm is brewing. It will hit us all soon. It will change everything, in Mumbai as well as in the world. You said no more of this. I thought you were out. Please, understand. It's bigger than any of us, bigger than whatever emotions we may feel at this time. A major collapse is about to happen, but I can protect you. Protect me? Because I'm a weak, lonely woman and you're a big, strong pirate? Please. I managed for 20 years while you were away. You haven't changed at all. You can't let go. All the violence, the killing, the old ways, they are who you truly are. Wazir Kale is gone and only the Maelstrom is there now. It's not like that. Leave me. I... I need time. I can't do this. I see. Perhaps you are right. <laughs> I hope not. I will call upon you again once all of this has died down. That's gonna hurt. The infamous Maelstrom is dead. Very well done, 47. No rest for the wicked, however. On to the next one. I think he's been attacked. Hey, something bad is going on. I just found this man and he's met some kind of trouble. I can't tell if he's okay or not. I'm sure it's him. My God, maybe he's a traveling salesman or something. Those suitcases could just contain the products he's selling. Very doubtful. I've been hearing a lot of strange noises coming from his apartment. He's pacing around at night and I'm pretty sure he's doing other things in the building. At least he's only here for a few days. Maybe he's an addict. Like that guy last year. Remember him? The state of his room after they kicked him out was just terrible. I don't know what he is, but I'm sure he's up to no good. You know, at one point, I'm pretty sure I saw him handling what looked like some sort of weapon in there. I told the landlord, but he doesn't care as long as the bills are paid. I can't wait for him to leave. 47. This is one of the Mumbai Chawls. My records show a few residential complaints about a new tenant in the building. Something related to strange behavior. It might be worth looking into. I'll never get that scope adjusted with this horrible viewfinder. What I wouldn't give for a world-class sniper rifle right now. Well, well. It appears we have a rival assassin in Mumbai and he's training his sights on Darwood Rangan. By the looks of it, I'd say we're dealing with a local operator known as the Kashmirian. A local hitman known as the Kashmirian is in Mumbai on business. He set up a sniper nest in a tower above a step stairwell in the local chawl. It appears he's targeting the luxury apartment belonging to Darwood Rangan, but has encountered a problem. Perhaps you can assist him. Good thinking, 47. Now, if we could only make Rangan appear in that window somehow. Karen Dar, aka the Kashmirian, was born in the US, but fled to his mother's native land, India, 20 years ago, following an FBI investigation into a string of serial killings in Texas. He adopted a new identity here and now works as a gun for hire for local mobsters. But who would want Rangan dead? And you look like you're all on coffee breaks. Come, karo, chalo. Get moving. Arre, I cannot believe I have to tell you this again. We are spending millions of rupees every day on this movie, and it's all going up in flames. Bab ka paisa hai kya? The script is missing. Gregory Arthur is missing. I mean, is anything in order here? I want results, people. Now!
When are you gonna be done mixing those colors? I mean, how long can it take to smudge out a few blues and reds? I'm creating art here. Seventy percent of the work is finding the right colors. Color mixing is an entire art form on its own. It takes time. Yeah, well, get a move on. Mr. Rongan wants you to go and get him as soon as you're done mixing your fancy colors there. You got it? Fine. If I don't finish it, Rongan will kill me. If I do, the artistic community will be dead to me. What fate is worse? Mr. Hussein, go on upstairs and wait for Mr. Rangan. I'm sure he'll be there shortly. It's me. Just to let you know that the house artist is ready to continue painting. Ah, Mr. Hossein, ready at last. Uh, did you get a shave? Oh, well, never mind. Come with me to the lounge. After you, Mr. Rangan. Hi, mister. Magnificent use of colors and form. Kya baat hai? If the new piece catches my Hi forceful there. nature like this, I will have nothing short of a masterpiece on my hands. I'll be the envy of everyone. I guarantee a perfect execution, Mr. Rangan. Sharp today, sir. All right. Chalo, let's get this done with. I expect these to be the final brush strokes, Mr. Hussain. I'm a busy man here. All right, 47. You know, Let's see if the aim of our Kashmirian well, friend is true. Hmm. Look, once the word gets out and my art-appreciating friends see it, your phone will be ringing off the hook. I can't wait. Hold your breath for a moment, Mr. Rangan. That's the reason I told you I wouldn't pay for the commission, by the way. I'm not stingy. No, no, not at all. But if I'm already paying you in exposure, Let's not overdo it, huh? you know? I prefer cash over exposure. Clench your fist, please. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> but sometimes, exposure can be worth more than just money. Because in this case, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Just wait and see. When you're done with this job, the contracts will be rolling in. That sounds wonderful, Mr. Rangan. Can you look up a bit? Thank you. That shot came from the Chawls. It looks like the Kashmirian finally got a clear line of fire. Darwood Rangan is dead, and not even by your hand, 47. What will you think of next? Hold up, 47. The Kashmirian is on the move. He's heading for another flat inside the Chawls. This might be worth investigating. If nothing else, we may get a lead on who his client is. The Kashmirian is moving to an apartment in the Chawl. It's facing the laundry area. I suggest we find out what he's up to, 47.
goes wrong. So many people have gone. Forty-seven. It appears the Kashmirian is using this room as a base of operations. Let's see what he's up to in here. It will all be over So, the Kashmirian is scoping out a bridge in an area primarily used as a laundry business. Interesting. It recently changed ownership and now belongs to Vanya Shah. It looks like he's found a new target and is waiting for her to get on the bridge. Perhaps your mentoring days aren't entirely over yet. The new foreman finally graces us with his presence. What do you have to report? Well done, 47. You've managed to lure Vanya Shaw out into the open. Anything could happen here. I see a lot of dead weight. Hmm. I've made a similar observation. Tell me more. Well, the objective is find the root of the problem, work to get close to it, and then eradicate it. I like your thinking. How would you approach the task you see before you? My usual method is prepare intensely, study the problem, learn everything I can, analyze all approaches. The idea is to gently nudge people to do what I want. And then, once the objective is in my sights, perfect execution. Not afraid to spill some blood in the process? Not at all. In fact, I find that happens quite often. I like you, Foreman. I think this could be the beginning of a very fruitful relationship. I aim to please, Miss Shah. You think I don't see you down there, little ants? Scurrying about at your own pace? Taking unnecessary breaks? Drinking my water? Wasting my money. You have had it easy up until now. But your new foreman will bring some order to this rebellious behavior. The days of slacking are over. You hear me? Oh my god. That is Vanya Shah taking care of 47. Are you planning on outsourcing all your work to the Kashmirian from now on? The Kashmirian is on the move again. It's paid off to follow him so far. Yes, Maybe he will lead us to the maelstrom. 47, the Kashmirian is on the move again. He looks to be leaving his apartment, possibly the trawl itself. I suggest following him to see where this will end. You don't know me, but your boss will want to talk to me. By now, he should have found out about the unfortunate fates of Rangan and Shah. I am the one responsible. Mad? No, no, no. On the contrary, I consider it a successful job interview. Just tell me where to go. Ah, yes, of course. I'll be there in no time. Where's the barber? My job interview is in an hour. I can't go like this.
sir. I don't like what you're doing. So please stop. to the account already. Spend it as you want, I'm sure. It wasn't about the money. If I'm right about this, about who their boss is, I'll never have to worry about the money again. Well, in a way, my rejection set me free. Big fish lie in wait, I'm sure of it. Wish me luck. Find out what that was. Huh? I'm on it. Oh, great! That position will be done in no time. Go on ahead. So, you're the one who called. The boss was intrigued. He'll see you. Better make it good. I'll do my very best. Come with me. Delving straight into the heart of darkness, 47. Good luck. You've got some balls, man. Killing two... Not that way. Over here. You've got some balls, man. Killing two of the city's most ruthless people is a job interview. <laughs> That's something else. All right, it's okay. just in here. If you want Good to luck. proceed, I need to check that you're not carrying anything dangerous. Okay, let me just pat you down here. You're good to go. Well done for waiting. Chal nikal jaldi. Time to face the dragon, 47. The mysterious stranger enters the lion's den. I guess you know who I am by now. The Maelstrom. Indeed. Two of my most trusted allies are dead. Childhood friends, lifelong companions. And now you're here. I always see my contracts through to the end. <laughs> Admirable. Really, it is. I'm assuming Vanya put out the initial contract that drew you here. She never did like Darwood. Perhaps a power play while our plans are in hiatus? But why kill her then? Unless... Unless... 
Yes, Darwood made a counteroffer. That would be the smart move. But then you heard the rumors about the return of the Maelstrom. And so you took a chance. You figured if Darwood was assassinated, I would put two and two together. Eventually, I would have to teach the Slum Queen a lesson. You took it upon yourself to help me before I asked. A show of skill. A move to get to the top. Is that right, boy? You can only kill so many mobsters before wanting bigger challenges. Darwood and Banya lost their way once they returned here to Mumbai. I blame myself for their failures. I should not have let them go back without me. They got lost in their egotistical pursuits. Darwood thinking he could use up my legend through his movies. Vanya assuming some mythological regency over the people of the slums. They forgot that which mattered the most. What was that? Legacy. In time, you become your actions. Vanya became cruel. Darwood became a hollow man. I wonder what we will become. What shape we will take in our final days. Exposed and roar in the eyes of the universe. We can't stay unseen forever. Death comes for us all, my friend. That it does. You are now one of us. You can walk around freely in the crow's nest. We will need to talk again, but not now. The infamous Maelstrom is dead. Very well done, 47. Mission completed. Time to find an exit. Interesting look, 47. Well, Darwood Rangan is at the tower expecting Mr. What Arthur any minute now. No need to keep him waiting. 47, that man you just eliminated, that was the Maelstrom. Well done. We were gonna tear it all down. The Institute, Providence, everyone who'd ever hurt us. We failed. The partners grew paranoid, made sure that Ortmeier's children would never challenge them again. I'm the only one who got away unchanged. The only one left who remembers. Ortmeier was Providence. Everything he did to us, everything he made us do, it all leads back to them. I'm breaking more rules than I care to count, Mr. Gray. What's your play? The partners hide behind a cloak of anonymity. Only one man knows their true identities. Your client, the top controller, the one they call the Constant. He is the key. <laughs> but he is untraceable. So what am I missing? A man would come to the Institute. A man with a Providence pin. The first Constant. If we find him, if he's still alive, he's our way in. You don't know who he is, but 47 does. <laughs> That's what this reunion is all about. Show them. You're just gonna hand it over. Our one bargaining chip. Olivia. <sighs> Fine. 47's memory was erased, irreversibly at the time. But after Ortmeier's death, his estate was acquired by the Ether Corporation. And they made an antidote.
It's a long shot, I know. This is not how it works. We don't just join the revolution. ICA is neutral. We don't take sides. I hate to break it to you, lady, but neutrality is a side. It's the side of the status quo. People have died. Civilians. You align yourself with terrorists, murderers. Sometimes even monsters serve a purpose. Look. Enough. You have a choice. But I made mine a long time ago. I will finish what I started. Subject 47, most gifted of all my boys. So you're the pick of the litter. Tell me about the incident. The subject ran away, he and another boy. The instigator was punished accordingly. As were all the neighbors. My men did what needed to be done. It won't happen again. Bring your house in order, Doctor. You won't like the alternative. I remember who he is. Gentlemen, let's go over the plan. The first constant is none other than Janus, the legendary Cold War spy master, a KGB senior officer and head of the sixth column special branch at Lubienka. Janus is a certified genius and expert of counterintelligence. He retired from the KGB in 1988 when he fell out of favor with the Kremlin and defected to the US. Shortly after, the Soviet Union collapsed. Now, it is unclear when Janus stepped down as the constant, but since 2004, he has been a resident of a quiet community in suburban Vermont. Mr. Gray. Right, so here's the catch. As an elite KGB agent, Janus was trained to withstand interrogation and torture. No amount of pressure will force him to disclose information he doesn't want to. Instead, we will need to search his home for clues. But if Providence learns of our presence, the game is up. So we frame Janus, make Providence think he was the real Shadow client. Correct. I will file a false ICA report, claiming to have traced a number of calls from Janus's house to the Institute in Romania. The case will seem clear. Mr. Gray was only a figurehead. Janus was pulling the strings all along. And by eliminating him, we will have neutralized the militia once and for all. However, for this subterfuge to work, you'll also need to deal with Janus's security detail. A Providence Herald and former Secret Service agent by the name of Nolan Cassidy. Intel describes him as diligent and inquisitive, and we cannot risk that he contradicts our story to his employer. Seems workable. I certainly hope so. Everything depends on this next move, 47. You made this our fight. Now let's even the playing field. Whittleton Creek, Vermont. On the surface, a picture-perfect suburban dream. Wide roads, golden maple trees, and verdant lawns. Most residents here are white-collar professionals, ranging from university staff to government employees. Most, but not all. Janus's unpresuming home is protected by a host of bodyguards, and intel shows that the fragile former constant rarely leaves the property. Nolan Cassidy, on the other hand, roams the neighborhood streets. A recent arrival, the dutiful Providence Herald is busy making threat assessments and settling in with his security team. 
Now remember, this is about more than just revenge. Janus is the key to bring down Providence. So get in there and find us a lead. Good luck, 47. Forty-seven, I have marked your map with several points of interest. We're running this mission with very little upfront intel, but these locations could provide clues to help you obtain the information we need. Good luck. Tell you, mm. these are the best muffins I ever had. I'm supposed to meet a client for a house showing today, but <laughs> I can't stop eating. <laughs> Maybe you know him, Mr. Nolan Cassidy. Um, can say that I do. Well, he's uh, he's interested in the Schmidt house down the road. You know, the one that police shut down after the well incident. I'm not really from around here, Senor. I don't know anything about that. Ah, I see. Well, never mind. A realtor with a taste for the sweet things in life is in Whittleton Creek to show a house to Nolan Cassidy. It looks like he's stuck at a local muffin stand at the moment. It would be a shame to keep Cassidy waiting, wouldn't it? You can wait a little longer. I need to squeeze a couple more of these beauties down. Hmm. It's the mirror that keeps happening to me. And done. Yes, I know it's top priority, but I... Yes, I know the commission... <sighs> Hi. Wow. I, well, some of those decorations could be considered a little over the top. I mean, back home, we never went all in, as you say here. It's Christmas. 
Blake thinks that just because he owns a lot of the land around here, he can boss everyone around. We have to go to town meetings every three weeks to do votes on local regulations because he keeps coming up with new ways of trying to control what we can or can't do around here. If that man ever got into higher office, we'd all be living in a police state. So, no flyer then? Oh! Oh! Have a fly. Charles Blake III appreciates your support. Aren't you the realtor? I've been waiting hours for you. Just hired another guy to give me a comparative market analysis. Mr. Cassidy, sorry. I'm sorry for the Sir, delay. Sir, if you want to come through, I'm ready I'm to gonna take you to the house. You down. About time. Let's go. You know which one it is, right? Last one on the right, far end of the road. Darling, I'm so hungry. Have you seen those beautiful patties back there? And Mr. Wilson just keeps standing behind the grill, even though there's clearly no more gas on it. I know, it's weird. Why don't we go grab a new What are you waiting for? Unlock the door and start the tour. Ah, finally. I've had my eye on this place for quite some time. Let's see what sort of secrets she holds. This is the downstairs living room. It is most commonly used for watching television and other recreational purposes. Large room, with two easy to get to exits, dark floors, Excuse hide me? stains easily. A room with lots of potential. Yeah, that's not gonna make me buy this place. Let's move on. This is the downstairs living room. Yeah, you said that already. It is most Let's commonly used. This is the downstairs bathroom. Useful when cleaning off after a messy day of work. I don't know. I'm not really feeling it in here. What else can you show me? Oh, hi there. I'm pretty much done here, so I'll get out of your hair. Good luck with the sale. I'm heading out now, going over to Mrs. West's house. Good luck with the tour. The kitchen, gas stove. Vinyl floors, which can be quite slippery when wet. Along with the bathroom, the kitchen is the most dangerous room in the home. I don't know. Got anything more interesting to show me? It's all very familiar. Your standard garage. Spacious enough for someone to set up a gym or training area. With some added soundproofing, an enterprising individual could use this for many things. What about storage possibilities? Anything of that nature you could show me? Nice work, 47. Let's hope he doesn't set off the alarm somehow. Very nice indeed. 
All right, let me have a look at this thing. Advanced Kronstadt Matrix Laser Home Security System. <laughs> we used to break these open for training at the Academy. The thing about these systems is, most homeowners are lazy. So, they don't reset the factory settings and enter their own codes. Let's just try the standard admin code, just for fun. Well, what do you know? It worked. Looks like Schmidt was a bigger amateur than I imagined. Mm. Frank, go outside and check the garden. I want to know how visible this vault is from the outside. Anything sticking out of the ground, weird sloping things like that. You got it, sir. So you're looking to sell this for, uh, how much was it again, 1.1? Sounds about right. Hmm, I suppose that's not unreasonable. And this vault unit looks quite versatile. Internal climate control and explosive laser security. All the comforts of home. Yes, quite interesting. And a nice looking safe in here too. Any idea what the previous owner was using this for? No idea. Maybe a mausoleum. Huh, that's weird. But I think I can come up with some good uses for it. All right, I think I've seen enough. No, no! Nolan Cassidy is down. Good work, 47. Janus awaits your attention. Hmm, a recording of some sort. The note mentions another house. Perhaps Cassidy is using one of the vacant buildings as a base of operations, 47. Hmm, a letter from Janus to someone called Zoe. It looks like a draft, and is full of explicit descriptions of how unhappy Janus is with Zoe and his sister having been appointed chairwomen of the Ark Society. Huh. I've heard that name before. This is a good find, 47. Huh? It's your chance to change the world. Vote Blake. Blake has many important initiatives to share. Say, uh, um, uh, you guys haven't been poking around the frog habitat behind the house, uh, have you? No. Oh, okay, great. It's it's just that, well, I I saw one of those security people from Mr. Janice's house, and I'm pretty sure he was burying something back there. And I just figured since you guys seem to be, you know, working together. You, you might know about it. Can't say that I do. Someone from Janus' security detail buried something in the frog habitat behind Cassidy's house. What could that possibly be? I covered Jimmy Hoffa's remains back there someday. Okay, all right, well, I'll just leave you to it. A 
cigar box with a few cigars and a note inside. Well, this is very interesting. The note indicates that the box was given to Janus by the Constant as per tradition, he writes. 47. This could mean the Constant and Janus meet up on a regular basis. Excellent find. Have you seen that Janice's oddball nurse has added again? Oh, yeah, the bird guy. I think he comes early just to chat with the birds. He spends more time with them than he does with Janice. A couple of weeks ago, I walked past him, and I have to tell you, he gets into some pretty personal stuff with those animals. He shared... So Janice has an appointment with a male nurse every Saturday. He's down feeding the birds by the creek at the moment. Sounds like a good way inside Janice's house opinion on Janice, let's just say it's not exactly overwhelmingly positive. Well, cranky old men don't tend to be very likable. Maybe if you don't get along with the elderly, stay away from a career where you make personal house calls for them. You know what I like about you guys? You're just so chill. Not like Janice. I have never met a man so full of bile. I mean, I'm just trying to help him, and he's behaving like a complete ass. All right, I better go. You know, it's like he knows that I know that he's hiding something, and he's enjoying that I can't figure out what it is. I know it sounds crazy because he looks like any fragile old man, but I think, no, I'm sure he's messing with me. Jesus, thank fuck. Sir, I will have to check you if you want to pass, okay? This is just standard procedure. Thank you. New guy, huh? The regular guy is indisposed. I'm here to take care of Mr. Janus. All right, just ring the doorbell. Someone will be with you in a moment. I swear, I have a license for it. I just... 
don't bring it with you. You can't just confiscate my property. I need it to get rid of an aggressively invasive mole. Poor old man, that guy. Oh, yeah. So, the other day, I accidentally asked Janus about that urn in the basement. <sighs> Big mistake. <laughs> Haven't you learned anything yet? How long did he talk for? Oh, can't really be sure. I zoned out eventually. It's not as bad as that time I used the gramophone inside the house, though. Man, that tune kicked off some old memories and some long-ass stories. He dragged me down to the basement and showed me all of his memorabilia. You know how it works. Interesting. The old man Maybe you should try to spark names, some of those old stories, old 47. Who knows what secrets Janus might reveal? He's a man when it comes to his old adventures. <laughs> well, I've learned my lesson, that's for sure. Who are you? Where's Lafayette? He's not well. well. Hopefully it's something serious. I wouldn't mind if Lafayette was replaced permanently. He's an insufferable bore with a room temperature IQ. But if you're the new guy, you'll need to be on time. I have a busy schedule, you know. You have a very distinct face, my friend. Eastern European, am I right? But more than that, a refined mix of cultures. You look almost like an artist's rendering of the perfect man. I knew a man once, a doctor. He would have found you quite interesting, I think. Wonderful. Oh. Ah, this takes me back. The night I passed the torch. End of an era as constant. We had the Vienna Philharmonic play it that night. Empty concert hall except for the two of us. A rare moment indeed. A good talk, hands shaken, honor among men. As it should be. I wonder if he remembers it as vividly as I do. <laughs> I should ask him when we meet again soon. So, that piece of music sparked a memory in Janus's mind, and we now have confirmation that he and the Constant will be meeting each other soon. Great work, 47. Good work, 47. We now know Janus is meeting with the Constant at an event related to the Ark Society. And we have an approximate date as well. I think that's all we're going to get. We're close to the finish line. It's time to end this. So, back to this thing. I'll just spend a few minutes with the inhaler to fill my system with as much oxygen as possible before we proceed to the bathroom for the health check itself. Well, while Mr. Janus fills his lungs, I'd like a quick word with you. Please, come with me. All right, new guy. I know this looks like a relaxed operation, but I run a tight ship. Nobody gets alone time with Janus unless I know them, and I don't know you. So here's what I'll do. I'm going downstairs to run a security check on you. It should only be a few minutes. In the meantime, you wait in the study. 
We'll lock the doors and my men will make sure you don't accidentally wander off. I'm sure you understand. Please, wait in there. 47, you have to find a way out of there. I can't possibly construct a viable ID for you in time. I'll have Miss Hall remotely interfere with their search, but we can't keep it up for long. Well, that was certainly an interesting turn of events. Still, no rest for the wicked, 47. You could probably slip back inside and give Janus his health check while his bodyguard is busy. Just be mindful of the patrolling guards. Don't worry, you're in good hands. This way, please. All right. Let's go, then. Nicely done, 47. It's time for Janus to pay for his crimes. You know, you remind me of someone I met a long time ago. A young boy in Romania. Tell me more about this boy. Ah, the boy. I remember his eyes better than anything. Ice cold, defiant. Maybe it was the nature of the project itself that led me to dislike him, but I felt nothing but disappointment when I looked at him. What a waste of resources. Project? What project? <laughs> it was all based on one madman's pipe dream. Create an army of super soldiers through genetic manipulation. Somehow, he had managed to impress my superiors, and they had provided him with effectively endless resources to be wasted on foolish ideas and experiments. The project was idiotic. The subjects were erratic, unreliable. Why build an army of reckless super-soldiers when a handful of well-placed spies can do so much more for your cause? What became of him? Oh, I don't know. Dead, I assume. In the end, we had his mind wiped. All the boys underwent the same treatment. I didn't follow the subsequent cleanup process, but from what I understand, the doctor and everyone else associated with the project is long gone. I see. Yes, well, enough reminiscing. Are you about done here? Almost done, yes. At last, the actions of the first constant catch up with him. Death feels like an easy way out for a man like Janus. Still. We are close now, gentlemen. Both targets are dead. All mission objectives are completed. 47, once you've left Whittleton Creek, I will notify Providence of our discovery. In the meantime, we'll go over the clues you found. Once we've located the constant, We'll make our final move. 
You make it sound so easy. Society, one of Providence's more obscure outfits. I've heard whispers. A survivalist club for the global elite, billionaires preparing for a global collapse. And now we know the Constant will attend their next gathering. So where is it? That's the catch. The report is redacted, no names, no location. So it's a dead end. I can't track them, not without ICA backup. Now, I'm no big shot analyst, but it seems to me Janus was the Ark Society's founder, so chances are they'll want to pay their respects in private. Track the coffin. Worth a shot. You're right. It comes back in flashes. Fear, anger, but... Like it happened to someone else. <laughs> your gift and your curse. What they did to you. Well, I spent a long time feeling guilty about that. Now, I wonder who got the better deal. Yes. Found something. What are we looking at? The ass end of nowhere. But this is where Janus's remains were shipped to. Our choice for a final resting place, wouldn't you say? Not bad. So we stake it out. Await the next gathering. Then we waltz in and kidnap one of the world's most powerful men. Without ICA backup. Like I said, it's a long shot. We'll take it. Smokes that was thrown over the fence from the old guy's garden? No, man. Uh, I'm trying to stop. Ah, well. You know, I think someone in there is trying to help the old geezer stop as well. What, by throwing his coffin nails over the fence? Seems pointless. So, Janus smokes despite being dependent on an oxygen tank and his bodyguard's insistence on hiding his cigarettes. I wonder what might happen if he combined the two. There's no reason for him to kick the habit when he's already so close to kicking the bucket. I say, the let the old man smoke. Have you seen that oxygen no, tank near his bedroom window? When you can't breathe with the help of your own lungs, it's probably not wise to also breathe through a cigarette. Letting him smoke is basically euthanasia. Good work, 47. All there is left to do now is wait.
There you are. I may have one foot in the grave, but without my smokes, I might as well be dead. <coughs> <coughs> As old Trotsky said, just as a lamp... At last, the actions of the first constant catch up with him. Death feels like an easy way out for a man like Janus. Still... You read me! You we are there. close now, gentlemen. Both targets are dead. Oh, hi, Dale. You look a little tired there. Heavy package? Not another lawsuit, I hope. Hi, Trevor. Just got this package for Batty down the street. I didn't know he had relatives in Colombia, but it says right here, to Uncle James from Hector. Smells like coffee to me. He's a strange one, that James Batty. Is he still trying to sue Janice? Oh, yes. That's exactly why I'm dreading the delivery of this package. He keeps talking my ears off and shows me all these legal documents like I'm supposed to understand what they mean. Say, would you deliver this for me? I can make you a postal deputy. Uh, no, sorry, Dale. I'm late for my yoga training. Hmm. A lawsuit between Janus and another resident. Might be a good place to start your investigation into Janus's life, 47. I suggest you look closer at this James Batty fellow. Maybe some other day. Oh, sure, okay. I mean, I'm late already, so I guess it's fine. I'm sure the missus will understand. Do you need some help? You know what, friend? I could indeed use some help. It's very kind of you to ask. People in this neighborhood are just so friendly. That's what I really love about this place. No problem. What do you need? Well, I'm running awfully late today. Chatty people in this neighborhood, you know? Anyway, I've got this package for James Batty in number 432. Would you be able to deliver it to him? I wouldn't normally just hand over a package like that, but you look very trustworthy. I could do that. House number 432? Yes. Big house at the bend in the road. It's undergoing fumigation at the moment, so you can't miss it. Just leave it in the mailbox and ring his doorbell, and he'll come get it. He lives in his shed in the backyard, so it might take a few moments for him to show up. Consider it done. Thank you again. This place is just amazing. Helen gives away muffins, and you're helping deliver packages. What a day! Your way, I do things mouth. is apparently engaged in a civil lawsuit with another resident of Whittleton Creek. James Batty, the plaintiff, wants Janus to stop his annual landing of a helicopter near the local creek. The lawsuit also mentions Nolan Cassidy and his unlawful surveillance around town. Hmm. So Janus takes a helicopter trip once per year. I think we're on to something here, 47. 47? I think it would be beneficial to locate the unlawful surveillance mentioned in the lawsuit. Perhaps Nolan Cassidy's house would be a good place to start. I talked to your man here, but he claims he needs to be done with my neighbor's house before he can remove Ooh, the Ooh, a package for me. Wonderful. I hope it's from the Mysterious Cheese Company. I love Mysterious Cheeses. I don't much care about your excuses. 
I've got a security hazard here. I demand you remove it immediately, or my lawyers will strip mine your little business so fast, you'll be left on the street in your underwear wondering what the hell happened. Make sure you do. That is Nolan Cassidy, former Secret Service agent and current Providence Herald. Cassidy is assigned to protect Janus. Hmm, a recording of some sort. The note mentions another house. Perhaps Cassidy is using one of the vacant buildings as a base of operations, 47. Drop off the surveillance tapes on Janus at the house. Cassidy was asking for money. Yeah, added them to the file. What a stupid system. Record the surveillance in the attic. Bring the tapes over to any The recorder is perfectly capable of playing the tapes as well. Rich, the owners of this house suddenly coming home. Less than ideal, but it's better if you can take it. Yes. I understand you tried to reach me earlier. Ah, there you are, my boy. Yes, well, it's about the chairman's seat. I understand Frederick was overlooked despite my recommendations. I would appreciate an explanation of the reasoning behind the decision. Well, it's a long and rather complicated discussion to undertake over the phone. Your request was put in front of the partners and considered, but in the end, it was decided to assign the role to the Washington twins. Saw their ideas as a breath of fresh air. A breath of fresh air. They are fortune seekers, robbers of the past, focusing on glory and wealth and outlandish futuristic dealings rather than conservation. They are not representative of what the society was built for. I understand your concern. Rest assured, I will be watching them closely very well. We have a lot to discuss when we meet soon. Agreed. Until then. Excellent. This confirms that Janus and the Constant will meet up soon. I don't think we'll be able to identify the partners today, but this is very useful. The tape doesn't specify where that meeting will take place, however. We need that final bit, 47. So, we know that Janus is expecting to leave Whittleton Creek via helicopter and that he's going to meet the Constant at some event. I think it's time to look inside Janus's house for more clues. Uh, I'll right have a look. Hey. Stay here. Have a cigarette or something. Someone, okay. Hey, oh, hey, I don't know what to do. I'll look into it. Charlie, I have arrived at the location and it looks clear. Over. Helen, how are you today? Oh, just fine, Janus, darling. It's Saturday, so I'm making a lot of fun. The last piece of the puzzle found, 47. While we didn't end up with the names or locations of the Providence partners as we had hoped, this at least gives us a clear bead on the constant. We can expect to find him at the annual gathering of the Ark Society in November. It should be enough. The Ark Society annual gathering. 47, that's it. That has to be the event where Janus and the constant are meeting. 
That's the last piece of the puzzle found, 47. While we didn't end up with the names or locations of the Providence partners as we had hoped, this at least gives us a clear bead on the constant. We can expect to find him at the annual gathering of the Ark Society in November. It should be enough. Oh, geez, darling, I'm so hungry. Have you seen those beautiful patties back there? And Mr. Wilson just keeps standing behind the grill, even though there's clearly no more gas on it. I know, it's weird. Why doesn't he go grab a new canister? I'm telling you, these new folks are strange. Did you see that Cassidy guy snooping around here? He's been looking at the party three times already. Why not just go inside? It's open to everyone. Yeah, it's strange, all right. The Wilsons are throwing a barbecue and everyone's invited. It sounds like Nolan Cassidy has some interest in the party as well, but for some reason, he's unwilling to go inside. Maybe you can help fix whatever's wrong in there, 47. Oh, maybe he's a vegan? Well, I don't trust a man who can't eat a rare steak. Christ. All you ever care about is food, Al. You should take this more serious. They're our neighbors. If they have secrets, we have a right to know them. The Wilsons? Sounds like a made-up name if you ask me. What's your take Keep on these Wilson tight, people, bro. Penelope? They seem very nice. My thinking exactly. They're perfect. Perfect teeth, perfect clothes, perfect house. What gives? My God, you're right. I had this sneaking suspicion when they first came here. The Chardonnay was a little too crisp. The hors d'oeuvres like tiny sculpted pieces of art. They're hiding something, aren't they? And that Richard guy just won't leave his place at the barbecue. The gas is missing. What's up with that? Not to mention Susan and her extremely vague answers. I asked what she did for a living. You know what she said? Oh, I work for the government. Boring stuff. <laughs> I don't buy that for a moment. Nobody on a government salary would be able to live in Whittleton Creek. Wanna go look through their things? Damn right I do. Kitchen. Yeah. Notice how everything looks brand is, new. Unused, even. What are you talking about? Remember who lived here before? The Hendersons? Honey, I came crazy. over once to ask if I could My use their chainsaw. So the kitchen beautiful. looked like they had a herd of animals living in here. So they remodeled. Makes sense. Uh, sure, but the Wilsons have been here, what, a couple of months? Unless they eat takeout every night, I'd like to know where the food comes from. Because this kitchen hasn't been used once. It does look very new. <gasps> Will you look at this? The furniture looks brand new. Well, they did just move here recently. People normally don't buy new furniture every time they move into a new place, Al. And if you'll remember, Susan said they'd moved around a lot. So do they buy new furniture every time? <laughs> Sounds expensive to me. No, oh. you know, you're right about that, darling. Let's see what else we can find. Ah, you need this room? Don't mind me. I'll find somewhere else. Hello. Thank you.
Oh, hi. I'm on my way out. Bye. Yeah, nice, I guess. You know I'm not really a bag guy. Let me explain it like this. If I had bags like these, Happy Night wouldn't just be a birthday event. What brand are those? Oh, never mind that now, Al. Susan Wilson said she worked for the government. No way is a government paycheck covering bags like these. Something's definitely sneaky with these people. Will you look at all these painting materials? Who is this guy anyway? Bob Ross? Bob Ross is a legend. You can't badmouth him, Al. Shame on you. <sighs> Fine. But seriously, what's the deal with all this stuff? You don't think? Maybe that's how they're making all their money. Art? Nobody ever got rich by cashing in on their fine arts degree, Al. You know that. Unless they create forgeries. I saw a documentary about Chinese forgery factories. They were literally spitting out fakes left and right, made millions. And this, this sort of looks like Pollock's number five, doesn't it? No, Al. No, it doesn't. Let's move on. Huh. So this must be where Richard Wilson does all his writing. Huh. This looks familiar. Well, you're the reader in the family. Well, is it any good? This... this is Georgette Delaney. Who? The To Love a Monster trilogy, the spiritual successor to the Cassandra Snow books. Georgette Delaney is working on book three in the To Love a Monster series, which started as Snow fan fiction. This is... wait. <gasps> no way! Um, I have no idea what you're talking about, darling. Well, that's not exactly a first. On here. Hmm. I guess that explains why the Chardonnay was so good. They've got an entire basement full of wine. These people are absolutely loaded. Uh, look, honey, I know we think there's something off about them, but honestly, we have to make friends with them. Look at all this. <laughs> well, two minutes ago, you were convinced they were serial killers. But now, after seeing a basement full of wine, they're your new best friends? Well, uh, look, they're clearly wealthy. Wealthy people are odd, right? Eccentric. Maybe they're terrorists, maybe not. But we befriend them, drink some of their wine, enjoy some of their food, and get closer to them to figure it all out. Hmm. I suppose we could do that. For the protection of the community. All right, then. Lovely she suit. You look sharp. Her teacher said she performed it more beautifully than any Hey, did you grab the pack of smokes that was thrown over the fence from the old guy's garden? No, man. I'm trying to stop. Uh, you know, I think someone in there is trying to help the old Jesus stop as well. My yard is possibly right. Once you see the difference, there's just a Let me know if I can help you find anything. Are 
charge your search is... Ah, excellent. You brought propane. Just what we need for the grill. Can you hook it up for me as well? Thank you so much. Oh, wow. Will you look at that? It's good to know the kind and helpful people still exist. Guess I have to start flipping burgers now. She just got her fifth scholarship. I told her not to worry about the money. His brother, when they said that man could lie. Oh, don't mind me. I'm just leaving. What the? Don't hit me! Ah! Do I know him? Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, feel free to mingle with the other guests. Once the food is ready, you really must try the buffet. I'm sure everything will be just to your liking. Thank you, Mrs. Wilson. I'll do just that. Let's hope he likes his food, 47. Ah, there's an open spot. You should try this. It really is to die for. What in the world? Thanks a lot. It's what I do. Christ, this is not gonna be pretty. Hey, you look sick. Nolan Cassidy is down. Good work, 47. Janus awaits your attention. You know the exterminator guy who's working on Batty's house? Same guy who just did Cassidy's, right? Yeah. So I let him use the green shipping container to store some chemicals. I asked him if it was poisonous, but he assured me that it was only a sleeping agent. Apparently, there is a fumigator in town. He's working on a house belonging to a James Batty and has previously been working on Cassidy's house. The fumigator has stored some of his chemicals, a strong sedative, in a container in a vacant lot near the creek. Sounds like this could be useful, 47. Get this. He told me that he doesn't kill the bugs. He only sedates them so that he can set them free later. Let me get this straight. He's an exterminator who cares about the lives of insects. What a weirdo. I thought so too. But then he told me this story about his pet cockroach, Pedro. It was genuinely a touching story. His parents were poor and couldn't afford to buy him a dog but he found this cockroach in his room one day, and he took care of it. Pedro lived in a shoebox, and he even made a little leash for him so he could take him walking. They did everything together, until one day, he heard his mother scream from the kitchen where he had left his pet while he went to the bathroom. He rushed to the kitchen where he found Pedro, pierced under one of his mom's stilettos. Oh, great. Now I feel bad for all the roaches I've stepped on. Sure, I saw something. Nah, we're just tired. Okay, just another few blocks.
Nicely done, 47. This should keep things nice and quiet inside the house. Hello, sir. Down. Good work, 47. Janus awaits your attention. Listen, I swear I have a license for it. I just Jettles. don't bring it with hmm. me. No last name. You can't name. just confiscate my property. I need it to get rid of an aggressively invasive mole in uh, this poor Russian. old man's backyard. Okay. Well, Calm down, going. demolition man. Unless it's a flesh-eating mutant mole, you don't need explosives. One of Janus's gardeners has decided to clear a series of mole tunnels using explosives. I applaud his enthusiasm, but sadly, local police have confiscated his equipment. If you were to find it, 47, it might be the perfect way to rid the world of Janus. We're gonna keep them safe in our trunk until you produce that license, okay? Ah, oh, come on, man. It's standard procedure. You stuff the holes, and then you blow up the tunnel system so it collapses. Look it up on YouTube. Sir, if the American police force looked to YouTube as guiding principle for standard procedure, I'm pretty sure civilization would have collapsed a long time ago. God damn it. Donut eating dorks? Oh, sure, if you play around a little with some fertilizer, propane, and gasoline, they're right there to confiscate your stuff and treat you like a goddamn terrorist. But when your car gets keyed by your neighbor's dim witted son, they're all like, Sorry, sir, I'm afraid we need more evidence. Nada. I'm sorry, sir. I can't let you through, okay? Please leave the area.
found another pack? Yeah. I thought you would crash like the others. I understand you have a mole problem. Oh, you're a godsend. Let's get straight to it. The sooner this is fixed, the sooner I won't have to listen to Mr. Janus's complaints. Follow me. <coughs> As you can see, we have a mole issue. Now, I know a permanent solution might take some time, but... If you could just fill the holes by the end of the day, that'd be great. Come find me when you're done. zoned out eventually. It's not as bad as that time I used the gramophone inside the house. I'm done. Great. Let me have a quick look. Uh, a bit unorthodox, maybe, but you got the job done. Let me get Mr. Janus so we can inspect it for himself. Hey. Tell Mr. Janus the molehills have been fixed. So the holes are filled, huh? Eh? Yes, Mr. Janus. The gardener took a bit of an unorthodox approach, but they do look filled to me. Well, I think I'll be the judge of that myself. Thank you very much. Hmm. This looks good. Seems like I've been forced to deal with moles my entire life. Moles in my organization, moles I employed, and now these little pests. Mr. Wilson, I know the hand of liver mail everywhere, but alas, nothing new for you today. <laughs> Once I controlled the whole world, ah, the mailman. now I can't uh, even control uh, my own backyard. I'm so sorry. I'm really oh, sorry. Go, go, go. At last, the actions of the first constant catch up with him. Death feels like an easy way out for a man like Janus. Still, we are close now, gentlemen. Both targets are dead. How did you not see this coming? My God, we came this close. The old man could have buried us all, our families. Do you think you feel more betrayed than I do? Get some perspective, please. Janus is dead. Lucas Gray is about to join him. And a cornered animal is twice as dangerous. Let's be perfectly clear. We were not exposed. The threat is neutralized. We are back on track. Even so, from this point on, we expect you to take- No, there is no way I'm doing that. How can you question my loyalty? 
in case treachery is contagious. Do you really want to do this to me? Is there a problem, Secretary? No problem whatsoever, madam. Here's to loyalty. My man on the island confirms that the Constant has arrived. We head out at sundown. Here, in case the crew get ideas. Why are you doing this, Mr. Gray? You had a chance to walk away. Why didn't you? A year ago, I'm working security for this banker, Cobb. Only to find out he's a Providence operative. I'd been running for decades, only to wind up where I started. We've all got barcodes on the back of our heads. Most people just never notice. 47 told me about your parents. How did they die? Car bomb. Surrey, 1989. Company named Blue Seed didn't care to pay for their mistakes. But I like to think no one's untouchable. I'm... I'm sorry for your loss. You feel it, don't you? Unlike him, you feel it all. Everything you've done. It's a dangerous thing, having a conscience. Attention, gentlemen. Our source on the island just made a critical discovery. The Constant has a poison chip embedded in his neck. A failsafe, in case he's compromised. Damn it. Oh, we should have expected something like this. So, we subdue the Constant before he has time to react. Not that simple. The device is remote triggered, and during his stay on the island, two kill switches have been entrusted to twin sisters Zoe and Sophia Washington, two young, ambitious Providence operatives and newly appointed chairwomen of the Ark Society. Apparently, even the Constant is unaware of this arrangement. Right, change of plans. We divide and conquer. 47 takes out the Washingtons while I figure out a way to get the Constant off the island. It'll be tight, but once we're back at the ship, we should be able to surgically remove the chip before the partners have time to react. 47? Tell me about the targets. I know them from the archive. Zoe and Sophia's father is president of a powerful conservative think tank one of Providence's prime assets. The apples don't fall far from the tree. No saints either. According to ICA files, the twins are pampered socialites who get their kicks from treasure hunting. Commanding a band of trigger-happy mercenaries, Zoe and Sophia prowl the world in search for ancient relics. With little regard for local culture or even human life, they stop at nothing to claim their prize. Well, collateral damage they may be, but safe to say, they have it coming. The Isle of Scale. Headquarters of the Ark Society. Founded by Janus in 1991, the Ark Society is the world's most exclusive club. Its plutocratic members fear the downfall of civilization, and they are willing to pay huge sums to ensure their own survival. Once a year, they gather here to shop the latest survival products and to showcase new initiatives and breakthroughs. Right. These gatherings are shrouded in mystery, so we have limited intel on what to expect on the other side of the walls. The Washington Twins are hosting their first annual gathering as chairwomen of the Ark Society 
and the Constant is known to attend every year. Beyond that, you're on your own. Good luck, gentlemen. I dare say you're going to need it. Won't you join us, sir? We were just about to begin. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the annual gathering of the Ark Society. As Ark patrons, you are welcome to explore the castle grounds. However, certain areas are off limits, including the keep, which houses the members area, convention space, and council meeting. Should you wish to apply for Ark membership, please be aware that such cannot be bought, only earned. All said? Excellent. Follow me, please. So, what do you think? Well, you weren't kidding. This place is pretty epic. Where are we anyway? I'm not sure. Some old knightly stronghold. The architect will be all year round for ideation purposes, but tonight's the only time the rest of us get together. So, you decide on what to buy from the catalogue? One of the bunkers, for sure, and I'm curious about the cryo facility. I think you're gonna like it here, Logan. With a seven-digit tuition fee. I better. What else? Uh... Ah, yes. Zoe Washington, one of our newly appointed chairwomen, has prepared a brand new official ceremony scheduled to take place in the upper courtyard. A stirring ode to rebirth and the enduring spirit of mankind. I believe that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Please enjoy your evening. The bar is right up ahead. Uh, excuse me, but it really freaks me out when people stand too close to me. Good evening. Now this is what I'm talking about. Say we're off to a good start. Selling. Wait. Is that? It sure is. He never plays corporate events. Come You're gonna make me believe that you are just a waiter. I told you guys. Like the best. Now let's get this spending spree started. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I'm so sorry. I'll try harder. I... Well, one thing I like. Is that the, um, what's the term? Um, the master of ceremonies in the chapel industry. Yeah. Yep. You think they're gonna what's with that weird bird effigy? It's the annual phoenix ceremony. It symbolizes the collapse of civilization from which the Ark Society emerges unscathed and triumphant. Ah, rebirth. I get it. Interesting. Zoe Washington is going to partake in a ceremony symbolizing the downfall of civilization from which the Ark Society will emerge unscathed. Apparently, a giant phoenix-shaped effigy is set on fire with Zoe inside it. Well, I suggest you locate this master of ceremonies who lights the Fire 47. If this doesn't sound like an accident waiting to happen, I don't know what does. What's new is that the master of ceremonies will light the effigy on fire with Zoe Washington inside it. Huh. A bit showy, wouldn't you say? Hey, whatever sells. Maybe it's just a rotten fish or something. I'll tell you another interesting fact about this castle. I'm under the... Okay. That makes no sense. If the 
pressure drops just... Hey! Are you kidding me? If the pressure drops just a bit, the locking mechanism fails and Miss Washington won't be able to escape. What sort of a maniac would lock herself inside a burning effigy without proper measures? Same kind who repels into an ancient temple full of death traps and poisonous snakes? Granted, but still. Seriously, what do you care? If some filthy rich broad wants to flirt with danger to feel alive, I say let her. They pay for our silence, not our concern. Yeah, I guess you're right. a death trap, in my opinion. Call me back when you get this message. Someone else because of all the cloak and dagger shit. Try to explain to her that I'm Seriously, I'll, I'll pay you. Me? You're the master of ceremonies. I'm a multiple Tony award-winning playwright. And famously reclusive. It's part of my brand. I never go on the spot like this. Besides, I do chamber plays. Not, not spectacle. What if people hate it? Shit, they're gonna hate it. They won't hate it, Mr. Feniger. It's just entertainment. Entertainment? Lord, what have I done? How did I let her talk me into this? Should I tell Miss Washington that you won't be going on stage? Everyone's waiting for you. God, no. No, she frightens me. Huh? Just, uh, just, just give me a moment to control my nerves. All right, Mr. Penninger. Break a leg. All is cool, all is cool. <laughs>
Mr. Fennec, excellent. The crowd was starting to get restless. Your peers are waiting by the stage, and the torch is ready by the money pit. Ready when you are. Who's this guy? Oh, it must be the LOC. A handsome pledge, and yet a drop in the ocean. Zoe Washington, the Ark Society recognizes you as our founder's rightful successor, our inspiration, our guiding light, the custodian of our future. Excellent work, 47. Enjoy the spotlight. Patrons of the Ark Society, you are part of a select chosen few. Our founder, Janus, showed us how to survive. But survival is not enough. We must live and we must soar. The Ark Society must not only commit itself to survival, but to progress. Be it our next home in the stars or the next step in human evolution. This is the eternal purpose of the elite. Not just to lead, but to lead from the front. When the time comes and all comes tumbling down, when mankind retreats once more into caves of superstition, we will keep the fire alight. We will be the torchbearers, the trailblazers and pioneers. Do, do not feel guilty for your privilege. Be proud, be fearless, for the future is ours to shape. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Look at you, Feniger. All dressed to kill. Now, let's do this thing. Light her up. As the world burns, we rise from its ashes. Not just to survive, but to live. One target down. Nice work, 47. Next up, Sophia Washington. serious incident here. Guys, better call this one in and bag this poor bugger. Stay safe. The cloud serpent. They say it belonged to Montezuma himself. It was lost for over 500 years. Oh, until Blake Nathaniel unsealed the serpent's tomb. Extraordinary. It's a flipping necklace. Anyway, the Washington twins found it first. The way I hear it, Sophia literally has the necklace in her hand when Nathaniel repels from the ceiling, triggers this ancient death trap, and 
you know, murder and mayhem ensues. But I thought those two were lovers. Not on and off. Currently way off, which explains the added security. I don't follow. Think about it. Why the need for an alarm system? We're all filthy rich. Except... So, according to its charter, the Ark Society collects priceless art and historical artifacts in case of a global disaster. And this year, world-famous treasure hunter Blake Nathaniel has donated an Aztec necklace called the Cloud Serpent to the Ark Society's growing collection. However, Blake fears that Sophia Washington, his former lover and rival, who has hunted the Cloud Serpent for years, will attempt to steal it for herself before it goes into storage. Hmm, could be just the bait we need. Blake thinks Sophia might try and steal back the necklace before it's sealed in the Ark of the Legacy. Good grief. No honor among thieves, huh? I'll say. Or I send Adrian to talk you over a Evening. Huh? I heard that. You! Systems up and running. Out of sight. Smooth, 47. The Sparrow's got nothing on you. of that woman. You! Mr. Nathaniel? What am I looking at? Why, that's the... Oh my. But... It's gone. It can't be. What, the alarm... Oh, good evening. Desperately disabled, I assume. But... There was someone here the whole time. And besides, stealing from the Order? No Ark member would be so foolish or disrespectful. Patrons, neither. Maybe one of the custodians took it to be polished, or... Oh, no, no, no. I know exactly what happened. Or who happened. You do? Who's the culprit? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. All right, I'll take care of this. Back to work. Or whatever the hell it is you do around here. Command? Yeah, I'm gonna need some backup over at the gallery. You've had a... Oh, 
what's this now? Blake, you backstabbing son of a bitch. <laughs> Why, hello to you too, Sophia. Hello there, sir. It doesn't make sense. Oh. What was that? Hello? Someone there? Hello? Ah, oh, excellent. <laughs> The council meeting. You know what it's about? Climate change. I'm just saying, if you're preparing for complete global collapse with a bunker in your backyard and a bunch of MREs, you're not seeing the whole picture. I would have said the same thing if you. Blake, aren't you dead yet? Sophia. Blake? I almost didn't recognize you without a knife in my back. I messed up. I see that now. Can we talk? <laughs> this should be good. Follow me. Can't talk, sir. Excellent, 47. Let's give Sophia her heart's desire, shall we? You've got one minute. I did wrong by you, Sophia. I see that now, and I want to make amends. Here, this is rightfully yours. Well, well. Look who comes crawling back. Leave us. Hey there. How you doing? You know, we lost three men because of you. Wickus was crushed by a rolling boulder. Jaco fell into a pit trap, and Zoe and me? We only escaped the arrows by using one of the local guides as a human shield. Now, this is a nice gesture. It doesn't even begin to make amends. I know. May I? Fine, but not too tight. You know, I thought about sending the boys after you. Grab the necklace and cut your throat ear to ear. You probably wonder why I didn't. The truth is, you beat us, Blake. I don't deny it. And I can't very well get even if you're dead. So, consider yourself warned. Both targets down. Impressive work, 47. And now, to confront the Constant. Mr. Gray, what's your status? I'm at the helicopter, but the place is crawling with security. 47, you better bring the constant to one of the boats in the harbor where it's quiet. You can use the kill switch to coerce. The Washingtons are dead. I have the kill switch. What did you say? How could you know about that? You will head towards the harbor. No sudden moves, no signs or warnings. I will trigger the device if I need to. I know you. The boy in the picture. You have his eyes. You're Burnwood's assassin. Move. Is it weird to say I'm looking forward to the end of the world? Because I think maybe I... Fine, but fallout, nuclear winter, it all just feels sort of... Partners no more. I take it. Pandemics. Excuse me, sir. I had a notion something didn't sit right with my mentor's betrayal. 
You murdered him, I take it, to get to me. Not just that. He had it coming. Interesting. It was my impression that you were cured of such sentiment. The good doctor built his serum specifically to target the seats of your emotions. As Miss Burnwood's sense of justice rubbed off on you, I wonder. Just keep walking. Take care, sir. For what it's worth, Jane has always I found Ortmeier's project for distasteful, for not to I mention some inefficient. Most but to alas, sometimes you have to play the hand the you're dealt. Oh, I know. Take it, this is not an ICA-sanctioned operation. What exactly does Miss Burnwood plan to achieve by targeting her clients? Violating her own code? She's doing it for us. Us? I'm glad I'm rich, though. Oh, I was see. rich before I married him. The penny drops. I should have known. How does a man leave no trace? By not existing in the first place. Lucas Gray, or was it Subject 6? He died when the Institute went up in flames, but no body was ever produced. And unlike you, his rage never faded. So, now you want the partners, the men behind the curtain who've caused you all this pain? Well, before you go knocking down a wall, you better make sure it's not load-bearing. Enough talking. You'll do plenty of that later. We're here. Get on the boat. Mr. Edwards, still think this is maintenance. Oh, Miss Burnwood, what have you done? Changing horses midstream? Truly unprofessional. You know what we want. Where is the carrot? No carrot. You're useless to the partners. Compromised. Even if we let you live, you can never return. Why die protecting them? When I can drag them down with me. It's a bad hand, but it's all you've got. Three families. That's all it took. The Ingrams, the Carlyles, the Stuyvesants. 
Three dynasties secretly pooling their resources over generations, creating a singularity so dense that nothing escapes its gravity. Never heard of them. Well, they've heard of you. In fact, you just became the top of their agenda. Go. We can't give them time to retaliate. Don't take your eyes off him. Be careful. Well, here we are again. I must admit I am disappointed, Miss Burnwood. I had such big plans for you. Save it. I know the truth now. You're outplayed. You have nothing left to bargain with. <laughs> you are so certain. So sure of the people closest to you. He never fails, does he? He never misses his mark. You found a window into his past. And yet... Something else remains hidden. A simple truth you learned long ago. Diana! Coming! No one, Miss Burnwood, is untouchable. something 47. According to this email thread, Sophia Washington has recruited one of the architects in a plan to discredit the Constant. Sounds promising. Interesting. The poison chip in the Constant's neck was designed by a Kronstadt engineer, a Mr. Marek Sinclair, who also works for the Ark Society. Apparently, Sophia wants Sinclair to approach the Constant and offer to remove the chip. If the Constant takes the bait, Sophia can prove to the Providence partners that their top controller is not to be trusted. Hmm, sounds promising. I suggest you head over to the conference space, see if you can't locate Mr. Sinclair. <laughs> now I gotta remember to ask Clementine. Hey, I got a space bubble and you're in it. Forty-seven. Olivia is trying to locate Mr. Sinclair's cell number. See if we can't contact him directly. Stand by. There. We have Sinclair's number. Making the call now. Keep your eyes peeled, Forty-seven. But I think we both know that if it happens, there'll be some other element at play. Something even we can't predict. You're not even thinking about the big picture. You want a Factor X? Extreme uh -huh. weather, wildfires, yeah, all of that. That's the one-two no. punch that breaks no. it all down within yeah, all I'm, I'm, uh, no, I'm, I'm just gonna have to stop you right there. I'm perfectly happy with my subscription and... Uh, this. Where's the saffron jujube and Oh, I was not aware Are there even of any in there? But, but I'm still not interested. In there. But if you can't taste right. it, I'll okay. okay, listen, more, lady. Sir. You're wasting my time and yours, okay? Don't call this Good number evening, again. Sophia. I adore old castles like this. I'm sure there must be a lot of yes. secret passages. And they ask me why I'm not a right. people. I never really thought about it. When I was little, my dad used to rent a castle for me and my friends on my birthday so we could LARP. You know, live action role play. We were knights and nobles. No magic users allowed, though.
That's Sinclair, all right. And those are the blueprints for the poison chip. Should come in handy. Nice evening. I suppose. No robe, no mask. Which rank are you? Oh, I'm more of an outside observer, Mr. Name's Sinclair. I'm chief technical designer at Kronstadt Industries. The name rings a bell. Here, I think it might interest you. What's this? I think you know. The chip in your neck is my design, which means I can override it for a price. Most interesting. Meet me at the tower and be discreet. We can't be seen together. Always nope. am. I have absolutely zero faith in the vault. It's a cute idea. Miss Washington. How was the test group's response to the DNA vault initiative? Actually, not quite as well as it was. Excuse me, sir. Good evening, sir. Please come in. Have a seat. It's lovely by the fireplace. May I see those blueprints again, please? Interesting. All right, Mr. Sinclair. I'm listening. Don't. In fact, forget all I said. Excuse me? This wasn't my idea. Sophia Washington. She's the one who told me to approach you. It's all a trap. Go on. I never asked why. I just went along because she's the boss. And you're telling me this now? Why? Let's just say I don't like to get my hands dirty. I see. Thank you for your candor, Mr. Sinclair. You have been most helpful. Hang on for a moment. Sophia, I need to see you at the tower. I'm sure you are, and no, it can't. Nicely done, 47. This should put Sophia firmly in the doghouse. I am sorry you got dragged into this. Sophia is spectacularly ambitious. Unfortunately, like most people of her elk, she lacks humility and a sense of station. And who are you, exactly? A humble advisor. Nothing more. Power without responsibility. Nothing humble about that. Hmm. You have my interest, Mr. Sinclair. I think we'll speak- All right, I'm here. Are you gonna tell me what's so damn important? Ah, Sophia. I believe you know Mr. Sinclair. We've met. What of it? <sighs> I don't blame you for trying, Sophia. Just for failing. Upstairs. Now. You made a big mistake, Sinclair. This won't be going away. It's your word against mine, you know. That's your play. 
I recommended you and Zoe to the partners against my mentor's wishes because I saw something in you. And this is how you repay me? You think because the partners noticed you that you have their trust, their confidence. I have served them for decades, and you don't even know their names. And yet, you're the one with a poison chip in your neck, and I'm the one holding the trigger. You? They gave it to you. Ouch. That's gotta sting. I mean, the constant is like the voice of God, right? Only he speaks for the partners. Surely they wouldn't dream of undermining his authority. Only the partners are old school, aren't they? They recognize class, pedigree, birds of a feather, and all that. And you? You reek of middle class. You carry the stink of public transportation. And while you have spent decades climbing the corporate ladder, me and Zoe, we've got ourselves a private elevator and it goes straight to the top. Don't fool yourself, Sophia. They may use you to punish me, but you're a tool, nothing more. And this pathetic ruse only shows me how much you have yet to learn. I've said my piece. We're done here, boss. Zoe, pick up, pick up, pick up. Shit. Yeah, it's me. Look, the Sinclair scheme blew up in my face. The constant nose. He hasn't told the partners. Yet anyway, but I, so I sort of lost my shit and waved the kill switch in front of his face. So who knows what he's capable of? This is starting to look like a shoot first and ask forgiveness later scenario. So, stop basking and pick up your phone. 47, if Sophia Washington triggers the kill switch device, okay. all is so lost. Take her out now, terrorists. before it's too late. We somehow infiltrated the island, had the constant at gunpoint. Zoe and me. We got there at the last moment. We had no choice. The constant was compromised. It was the only way to protect the partners. It, it's what he would have wanted. Huh, might work. Just might work. To hell with it. I'm doing this. Just one small push of a button. Oh! Ah! Both targets down. Impressive work, 47. And now, to confront the constant. Mr. Gray, what's your status? No! 47, that was our only lead on the partners. Abort mission. The council's still in session? No, they've called a recess. Sophia Washington wants them to pass some kind of motion, but one of the council members is fighting her tooth and nail. Huh. Wouldn't happen to be Jebediah Block, the coal baron, would it? Yeah. How do you know? Well, I happen to know he's on the council. He's one of the original five. You know, the first people to fund the Ark Society back in 91. Plus, I just walked in on Sophia Washington screaming Block's name while beating up a pillow cushion. Huh. So, Sophia Washington has called a council meeting between the original five members of the Ark Society. Sophia hopes to pass some sort of motion, but she faces stark opposition from ultra-conservative coal baron Jebediah Block. Hmm. I suggest you find Mr. Block while the council is still in recess, 47. I suspect the headstrong Sophia will not take kindly to dissidents and troublemakers. Oh, she was properly pissed. Jeez, must mean a lot to her. What's it about? What am I, paparazzi? I just work for these assholes. Same as you. Well, keep me posted in case teeth start flying. Can do. Sophia the schemer. What's she up to this time? You know right, that cross net designer in charge of the Ray Outlook program? Sure. Whoa, uh!
Climate change denial has served you well so far, but the world is finally catching up. The Corona Treaty is only the beginning. Change is coming. Bah humbug. The council contact. This boat can't possibly be fine. Oh. Mr. Block, you look troubled. I know you, don't I? You're Janus's man. I'm a friend of the Ark Society, yes. If I may be so bold, I heard about your predicament, and, well, I believe I may offer a fresh perspective. Why not? Shoot. All right. Say the world does collapse. The weather goes haywire, the poles melt, and the Ark Society heads off to a comfortable Arctic sanctuary, while the rest of civilization falls into chaos. That's about the gist of it. Sounds great to me. No more needy assholes. Why wait? Well, you do realize what kind of place it'll be, right? What are you talking about? A hundred or so people. No market. No economy. No social structures. It will be like a space colony. Everyone equal and dependent on each other. It will be egalitarian, sir. It will be, well, communist. My God, that's what I paid almost two billion for? Why didn't anyone tell me sooner? Merely food for thought, Mr. Block. Good night. I... I need to, um, Think. Brain uploads, huh? Living forever as a string of code. Miss Washington, after due consideration, I have revised my position. I would like to support your motion. Well, well, look at you, Block. Finding your good sense and manners. Come along, then. I'll call a vote at once. I knew you'd come around. Yes, hello you're there. You're stubborn, Block, but you're not a schmuck. You know I'm right. The analysts of my father's think tank have been grinding the data for months, and they are rarely wrong. The Karuna Agreement, climate litigation. We estimate that fossil fuel companies like yours have a decade, at best, before you're all resigned to the junkyard of history. And what kind of secret society would we be if we didn't keep each other in power? What, indeed. I knew we could talk sense. Just vote in favor of my motion, and I promise you, Block, you'll power the world for decades to come. Well, who cares how, as long as you're the one getting paid. Ain't that the truth? Friends and founders, I the think recess you were is on over. A little Let's too return strong, to the council Mr. room and proceed with the vote. Ah, 
See you there. Well, you've certainly placed yourself at the crossroads of history. Nicely done, 47. Let's reiterate. For decades, you, the titans of the energy industry, have conspired to obscure the truth about climate change through lobbying, misinformation, and propaganda. This strategy has been incredibly successful, but all good things must come to an end. It is time for you to adapt or die, ladies and gentlemen. This is why our analysts have devised a 10-year transition plan to keep you in power. Play this right, and you will not only thrive, but this time, you will be the good guys. In other words, you have nothing to lose. So, everyone in favor, say I. 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 Yay or nay, Block? Silence is consent. Nay. Excuse me? You heard me. Nay. Oh, for the love of. Ah, oh, idiot. Son of a. Blocked. You stupid. Oh. That's. Four eyes and one nay. Jebediah Block vetoes the motion. This council is adjourned until further notice. Block. A word? Upstairs. Right away, please. So, are you gonna tell me what the hell you're playing at? Just looking out for number one. Don't be an idiot. There's no future in coal, Block. You have one choice. Go green or go extinct. Now, personally, I don't give a shit if you go the way of the Dodo, but you are one of the Ark Society's biggest contributors. We'd hate to lose your business. Besides, if terrestrial coal goes under, who will pay for your children's survival? Your grandkids. After all, nobody says disaster will strike in our lifetime. You have a moral duty to stay rich, Block. Nice try, but I don't have grandchildren. You just had to make this difficult, didn't you? Here's the deal, Block. My family and I we serve a group of powerful individuals who prefer to stay anonymous. Letting the climate go to hell in a handbasket has served their interests well, but only up to a point. You see, they are sitting on some patents that'll knock your socks off. Weather control systems, recycling pollution as fuel, cold fusion, you name it. And they plan to make trillions protecting the world from the very threat they worked so hard to create. But to do so, they need you guys to quite literally stop fighting windmills. Huh. The truth at last. And what's in it for Jebediah Block? Gentlemen, please give me and Mr. Block a moment. offered you a carrot. Now, here's the stick. We know about Montana, Block. The mine collapse in 2015. 
It would be a shame if the American public got wind of your somewhat creative approach to safety regulations. Your popularity ratings are just south of John Wilkes Booth as it is. I see. Both targets down. Impressive work, 47. And now, to confront the Constant. Mr. Gray, what's your status? I'm at the helicopter, but the place is crawling with security. 47, you better bring the Constant to one of the boats in the harbor where it's quiet. You can use the kill switch to coerce him. No! Aye. Yay or nay, Block. Silence is consent. Aye. Five eyes. The vote is unanimous. The motion is passed. And now? I believe a toast is in order to the future. Signed, sealed, and delivered. To the, the future. future. The future. The future. around like a sucker. I don't know. Looks kind of fun. Like Final Club all over again. How does it work? The tokens are hidden throughout the castle, you know, like out of reach places like the ramparts. And the first initiate to collect enough tokens undergoes the polygraph test with the chairwoman. If you're deemed worthy, you get promoted dark member. Hmm. I could do that. So, every year, aspiring ARC patrons compete in a treasure hunt to obtain membership status. The first initiate to collect enough tokens undergoes a private screening with Zoe Washington, which appears to involve a polygraph and electroshock device. Hmm. I suggest you join the fray, 47. A private audience with one of our targets is just what we need. Yeah, I'm not so sure. Depends on your pain threshold, I guess. You see, Zoe Washington upped the stakes this year. Word is, she's brought an ECT device to the interview. Wait, electroshock? But that's torture. Some would call it therapeutic. Wow, I knew the twins were hardcore, but this takes the cake. Count me out. Already had. Sir? Psst, Cheryl, would you believe this is... You wouldn't happen to have one of those tokens, would you? I went to it's just this riddle on my invite. Seek the keepers of the gate okay, stop in playing. the courtyard they await. Oh, what else could it mean? No such luck, but some of the ARC members might. I heard a couple of them whispering. They're definitely up to something. Got it. Thanks. You're gonna love this. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Archeans, can I have your attention, please? Now that everybody's here, we're ready to proceed. Please make your way to the upper courtyard. Ceremony is about to begin. Thank you. Psst. Hey, Paul. Not now, Marco. I'm kind of in the middle of something. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. You see, I have one of the tokens. You what? How did you? What difference does it make? Look, the token is yours if you want it, but on one condition. Are you serious? Name it. Okay, here's the deal. I want a seat on the Titan ship, but I don't want to become an ARC member in order to get it. It's too much hassle and responsibility. Wait, you want me to... Buy a seat in my name, yeah. I'm... No, sorry, Marco, but I can't. If they figure it out, we'll both get expelled. They won't find out. Don't be a chicken, Paul. No, no deal. Now stop bothering me. I'm behind as it is. So, I hear you have one of the tokens. Could I, uh, see it? Just a quick peek, yeah, so I'm sure I know what it looks like. Pretty lame, Initiate. The trick is to make it sound simple. You sign on three friends, seven times. Seems like the easiest thing in the world. Huh?
pizza. Oh, shoot. What's with that weird bird effigy? It's the annual phoenix ceremony. It symbolizes the collapse of civilization. Shit! Ah! Ah! Cock! I get it. Oh, Drops just a bit. The lock. What? Tokens, tokens. Come on, need more tokens. We can't. We can't. Wow. Hey, who is throwing stuff around here? Come on. Good job. Hey, loser. Yeah, you. How's the hunt? Well, feast your eyes on this. That's right. I got plenty of tokens. Plus Good work, 47. Hey. You've got all the yeah, tokens needed to gain access to the initiation. I suggest you find your way to the screening room. There was an ornate door near the courtyard. Hand in your tokens there. I bought one of those Soviet survival bunkers. What? Using force makes you feel big and important, is that it? How about you use your brains, asshole? Initiate. See, this Let's is see why your whole bloody gender is falling behind. Congratulations, Initiate. Fine. Now the Whatever, loser. Keep begins. it. 
I'm still gonna kick your Name ass. Name Washington. An initiate has completed the treasure hunt. Yeah, understood. Bring it into the interrogation room now. So, uh, you think you got what it takes in this shit? You think you got the stomach for what comes next? I can hold my own. Is that so? You some kind of tough guy? Tough is for amateurs. Oh, Miss Washington's gonna have a field day with you. Welcome, Initiate. Take a seat. Now pay attention. This is a polygraph machine hooked up to an ECT device. That's short for electroconvulsive therapy, and I assure you it packs quite a punch. In a moment, Ms. Zoe Washington is going to ask you a series of questions, and I suggest you answer truthfully, or the machine will know. Is that clear? Very. Good man. Solid work, 47. Let's see if you can't turn this interrogation to your advantage. So, you made it this far, Initiate, but now the real test begins. Is the machine operational? The ECT device is set to medium voltage. I don't recommend going higher than that. This setup is still largely untested. Well, as long as the Initiate speaks the truth, we won't need to. Has my colleague explained the rules to you? Exhaustively. Good. Let's begin. And do not attempt to deceive me. First question. Are you the best in your field? No. He's not telling the truth. Now, why would you lie when the truth plays in your favor? Do you think this is some kind of joke, Initiate? If so, trust me, you are sorely mistaken. Amp up the voltage. Yes, Madam Chairwoman. Now, let's try something else. Are you a follower of our late founder, Janus? Yes. False. Look, I don't know what kind of game you're playing, Initiate, but I'm warning you. Do not test me again. Increase the voltage. Yes, ma'am. Now, do you have an ulterior motive for being here? No. Nope. He's lying. Enough! Don't say I didn't warn you, Initiate. You brought this on yourself. Crank it. All the way up. Madam Chairwoman, Zoe, are you sure that's wise? I don't even know how far this thing goes. Could be dangerous. Do it. Now. Moment of truth, Initiate. Are you pretending to be someone you're not? Yes. True. That's it. Last question, then. Were you sent here to kill me? No. Nope. He's lying. <laughs> One target down. Nice work, 47. Looks like an Next up, Sophia Washington. Now. Moment of truth, Initiate. Are you pretending to be someone you're not? Yes. He's not lying. That's it. Last question, then. Were you sent here to kill me? Yes. Checks out. I knew it. You're not going anywhere, initiate. Trespasser. Um, you should head back to the common areas, Let initiate. Let me see your hands. Don't Sorry. even touch you. First question. Are you the best in your field?
Yes. Checks out. Very good. Now, are you willing to break the law if required? Yes. True. I see. And can you keep a cool head under pressure? Yes. He's not lying. Interesting. Well, you're just perfect, aren't you? Maybe a little too perfect. Are you a reporter working for the liberal media? No. Checks out. Well, that's all I needed to hear. Congratulations, Initiate. You have passed the test. Follow me. So, you'll need to dress the part. Over there's your new set of robes. Wear them with pride. You're one of us now. Congratulations, Initiate. Or should I say, ARC member? Yep, you're one of us now. Welcome to the big leagues. Nice. Suits you. Okay, time to join your peers. Follow me. As a fully-fledged ARC member, you'll have special privileges. First offer on our top suites and bunkers, early access, you name it. Uh, would you like to be on the first ship to Titan? Well, you can now. Fascinating. Of course, with privilege comes responsibility. You are expected to invest in future projects approved by the Council well, and sir. to donate to the Ark of Legacy. Not a problem. I'm very accountable. That's what I like to hear. In fact, a man as composed as yourself could prove useful in other matters. We should discuss the precise nature of your business, but that's for later. A remote trigger must be a kill switch. Hmm. I bet this would make the constant come quietly. But first things first, 47. Focus on the target. One target down. Nice work, 47. Well, here we are. Goodbye, Initiate. And, uh, welcome to the big leagues. Doctor, the mask suits you. I have been planning the Founders' Week for over a month. I have some of the world's most prominent people waiting to pay him their last respects. I have the star of the Prague Philharmonic on stage, ready to play a blindfolded rendition of Schubert's Ave Maria on the harp, for God's sake. And you're telling me that you lost the sodding dagger? I'm really sorry, ma'am. My team received no notification. You sure they didn't give you a crate number? They did not give me a crate number. I was told you people would have it under control. Fine, fine. I'll go and have another look. See that you do. And when you do find it, bring it to the tower basement where the Founder's body is being kept. The mortician will handle things from there. As we know, Zoe Washington will host Janus's wake. But now it seems an antique ceremonial dagger, which Janus is supposed to wear during the service, has gone missing from storage. I suggest you locate the disputed dagger 47. 
This wake could be a chance to catch the target unaware. More pressure. Just what I need. Sir? I don't believe it. What's that? Oh, that's cute. Uh-huh. Uh, got some strange noises. You know I have sense of ears. Over. Nice. Give me a solid. Check that out, will ya? Reading you five by five. Ain't nothing here. Yep. Whatever. So, let me see if I got this straight. The chairwomen run the Ark Society, and they employ an R&D team of scientists and engineers who... ...develop all these... Crazy project. Yep. Architects. Arc attacks. Get it? Do me a favor and go check that out, okay? Will do. I swear I can even hear the ocean. Wow. Can you go and see what's going on? Sure. Nathaniel, right? But uh, if you don't mind me asking, people have been searching for the cloud circle for centuries. Wherever did you find it? Well, to cut a long story short, it began with a Portuguese galleon salvaged off the coast of Costa Rica. One of the long dead sailors had a tattoo. Hey, man, you have a good night. Neck, ...and it spoke of a map, the mythical serpent's tomb, hidden inside the royal cemetery. Polymer treatment will prove huh? You heard it? Go see. There we are. Don't you look handsome? 
Why, if I didn't know any better, I'd say you died only yesterday. With a final touch of your burial mask and ceremonial bed. Oh, I just look like that. Ah! My beauty polymer tree will preserve your body for millennia. Longer even than the pharaohs. Which reminds me, they should have brought the dagger down by now. I wonder what's keeping them. What? We can't very well display them before your fellows without your prize dagger, now can we? Miss Washington, uh, that you. She tells me it belongs to Star Nicholas and that it might have been used to stab Brad Beauty. I have no What? Must be very Don't do both! Ah! valuable artifact. <sighs> I wish I had known you in life. <coughs> Cue the music. You, playing dead? Hmm, this takes me back. Good thinking, 47. That's odd. Who gave the signal? Oh well. Everything seems to be in order. Suppose we move ahead. Thank you for coming, everyone. The service shall begin in a moment. Thank you all for coming. As Janus's successor, it, it falls upon me to say a few words. I I'll keep it brief, for there is little I can say that does the man justice. Janus was our founder, and like all true visionaries, he was far ahead of the curve. While we, the privileged class, were blissfully toasting the end of history, Janus saw the writing on the wall. As a veteran of the Cold War, Janus knew better than anyone that when true disaster strikes, the rich are as damned as everyone else, unless we work together. Janus never got to see the collapse, but died peacefully in his sleep. And yet, what he started in 1991 will one day be hailed as the dawn of a new age, one where the best among us can thrive uninhibited. This is Janus's legacy. Long live his memory. And now, you are welcome to pay the Founder your last respects. You should know. So long, old man. People You had a better run than most. And most successful spy in modern history. Oh, and that whole Jasper Knight incident was just... Oh, brilliant. Anyway, enjoy your rest. You've earned it. looking even in death. Forget it. That mortician is a genius. I totally believe that you once wrestled a brown bear to a tie. Anyway, Godspeed, Mr. Janus. Sorry I never knew you. Goodbye, Janus. 
we won't forget you. Odd how you helped shape the 20th century, and yet nobody knows your name. As for Danya, old boy, you were always the best of us. I still can't believe I never got to beat you at chess. So long, my dear. I can't believe you're gone. Last of the greats. I'll make sure those naive fools who've replaced you won't mess things up too bad. Don't you worry. Goodbye, old friend, and thank you for everything. Rest is... Yurd, I will finish what you started. Fuck! You didn't kill her! You're out, oh, boy! Oh, I know I will have to take you down if you don't come No! Fly. 47! So, here we are. You didn't want me and Sophia taking over. Fought us tooth and nail, but a fat lot of good it did you. The partners, they turned a deaf ear, and deep down, Janus, you know why. Because, for all your smarts, you're just rank and file. Pedestrian, middle class, blah. And we have the one thing Merit can't buy. Blue. Blood. That's right. Good old-fashioned pedigree. That is why Sophia and me will one day be partners of Providence, and you'll spend eternity as a wax figure. So long, mastermind. One target down. Nice work, 47. Next up, Sophia Washington. A remote trigger must be a kill switch. Hmm. I bet this would make the constant come quietly. But first things first, 47. Focus on the target. Three families. That's all it took. The Ingrams. The Carlisles, the Stuyvesants. Tell us everything about them. The ivory towers are about to fall. And when we're done... Let's cross that bridge when we get to it. For now, the partners are all that matter. There's an issue. Of course there is. Olivia's tracked the names mentioned by the Constant, and they're dead ends. How dead? Obituaries for all three have appeared online. Accidental death, heart failure, lung cancer. They're covering their tracks. Faster than I thought. A contingency plan of sorts. The Constant wasn't aware of it. Well, it seems they didn't tell him everything after all. Something this big will leave traces behind. The Constant says to follow the money. Milton Fitzpatrick. The investment bank. It's a key Providence asset. Which you worked for. The director of the New York branch is a Providence operative. It's our best bet as a way in. I'll tell the pilot to turn the plane around. Right, gentlemen. Here's what we've come up with. The partners are transitioning between identities. But everything is so recent, the Milton Fitzpatrick bank records will still be intact. We've confirmed that the partners have active accounts there. However, the bank's records are remotely updated on a frequent basis. We may only have hours before any leads that could get us the new identities of the partners are gone forever. The data we need can be obtained in two ways. The bank's data core can be accessed through the basement vault, but getting inside the vault could be challenging. Alternatively, bank director Athena Savalas, head of security Mateo Perez, and head of accounts Fabian Mann each carry a partial backup drive with the data. We'll need all three drives to get the full data. Now, 
we cannot risk the partners discovering the data breach. Eliminating the bank's director, Athena Savalas, would sever the last remaining Providence tie to the bank and keep our activities hidden. Okay, one more time. We break into the vault, extract the hard drive rack, and eliminate the director on the way out. We. You. Good luck, 47. Welcome to New York, 47. The Milton Fitzpatrick Bank is open for business, but it seems there's some sort of investigation underway. Expect increased security. Your target, Director Athena Savalas, can be found in her top floor office, overlooking the iconic Teller Hall. Head of security, Mateo Perez, is roaming between the vault area and the Teller Hall, talking to employees and head of accounts, Fabian Mann, can be found on the investment banker floor and the top floor of the bank, driving the internal investigation. Remember, we need to secure the data from the bank's reinforced vault, or alternatively, acquire three hard drives carried by the director and her two lieutenants, Mann and Perez. Good luck, 47. Sorry, sir. No one's turned it in. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll just come back a little later. There is a guy in the bathroom puking his guts out with nerve. So if my chance are pretty good. Yeah. Oh, have we talked to everyone? No, I think I saw him go into the bathrooms. He's been there for ages. Okay. Doesn't sound promising. Yeah, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Let me know when he comes out. Will do. Thanks. Milton Fitzpatrick is holding a round of job interviews. The final applicant was last seen going into the bathrooms where he's been for some time. Nerves, maybe? You are feeling better, I hope. Should I let HR know you're ready for the final interview? I feel like a new man. I'm ready. Wonderful. Follow me, please. It's right down here. So, Nervous? Maddie, Don't worry. You'll do own. fine. My squad's working hard in there, but so far we have nothing. No. Nothing concrete so far. I'm reviewing tapes from last night, but everything looks clean. There's a couple of small glitches we're looking closer at, but those might be caused by some power. Mr. Thomas, have a seat, please. Ah, Mr. Thomas. 
Good to meet you. I'm Kevin, and this is Melissa. We're both with HR, and we will be guiding you through this last test. It's important to stress that there's no pass or fail here. It's merely a standard personality test meant to gauge how you'll fit into our corporate culture. All right. If you're ready, let's kick this off, okay? I'm ready. Okay, so this is a very simple test. All you do is pick a card and tell us what you see there. Now, it's important to point out that there are no right or wrong answers here. It's just to give us a better impression of who you are on a psychological level. Does that make sense? Yes, I'm ready. All right, Mr. Thomas, uh, let's proceed then. If you will, please pick the card that most conjures up the word opportunity. This one. All right, now look at it closely. Take a few moments, then tell me, do you see an animal? or an object? Animal. I see. What kind of animal? A bird. An eagle, perhaps. An eagle. Very interesting. A forceful animal. Anything else? It's feeding on something. Feeding? On what? A carcass. The scene is reflected in a pool of blood flowing from the body. It's a vulture feeding on someone else's kill. That's very graphic, Mr. Thomas. Yes, brutal even. Right. Mm, very interesting observation, Mr. Thomas. <sighs> Not what we expected, but, but that's perfectly fine. Let's take the next one, shall we? Pick any of the remaining cards that make you think of execution, please. I'll pick this one. Good choice. Tell me, what is the first thing you see here? Just the very first thing that comes to mind. I see a figure in a large coat, perspective skewed, as if I'm looking at him from the ground. He's got something in his hands. I, uh, go on. He's armed, dual firearms, large caliber pistols. I see. What else do you see? He's just finished a job, perfectly executed. And who is this man? It's me. Very, very interesting, Mr. Thomas. Well, that's a very creative interpretation, Mr. Thomas. Uh, I think we've just got time for the last card. Please proceed. Uh, this last card should hopefully make you think of prosperity. Okay. Oh, very good. This is an interesting one. What do you see here? Take in the whole image, please, and in as much detail as possible, tell me what this reminds you of. Wealth. Hmm. Can you elaborate on that? I see a big pile of money earned performing questionable actions. And how do you feel about that, bending the rules of the game? It's what I do. Very good, Mr. Thomas. Well, I have to say, that was very impressive, Mr. Thomas. With your cutthroat approach and killer instinct, I think you'll fit right in with Milton Fitzpatrick. Wouldn't you say so, Melissa? I couldn't agree more, Kevin. Mr. Thomas, allow me to congratulate you on your new position as an investment banker here at Milton Fitzpatrick. Thank you. When do I start? <laughs> well, aren't you an eager beaver? Well, we expect you to come in tomorrow at 8. Welcome on board, Mr. Thomas. You know what? If you want, feel free to have a look around the bank. You've got clearance all the way to the top. Get to know the place. Just don't go into the CEO's office. We don't want to lose you on your first day. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure you can see yourself out, Mr. Thomas. Have a nice day. Uh, hello and welcome. Price. Who the hell are you? What? What was that? So, what are you getting, Frank? Frank? I'm not getting him anything. He's an asshole. Besides, I think you want enough money to find him whatever. Yes! I got you! Ha <laughs> ha! You suck at this game, buddy! A notice from the bank's head of security mentions that the building suffers from unstable Wi-Fi. If the connection fails, IT have full access to the director's office and computer. Hmm.
Sounds useful, 47. Suck, big giant. You know, I hate playing with you. You are a fucking nerd. Ooh, aren't we grumpy today? Did your left hand cheat on you over the weekend? Stop back. Hello, IT. Have you tried restarting it? Hi, Roy. It's Tim. Director Savalas is PA. Listen, I hate to disturb you, but the director wants one of you to come up and look at her machine. Something's off. Uh, as soon as you can, please. Say, aren't you Ruby Red? The investigative officer has come to the director's office. I feel like giving that bit woman a piece of my mind. I gave this place. Everything seems to be normal on the third. Good. Finally. I hope you have good problem-solving skills. I'm known to be the best. <laughs> You'd better be. The director's a, a handful. Don't talk to her, all right? Wasn't planning on it. All right, 47. You're in. Make the most of it.
Where are we on this? Give me an update. The external auditors are still looking through things. We have no idea what they took. We may never know. If they took anything. What are you talking about? Why break in and not steal anything? We're a bank. Well, to be honest, I don't think there was a break-in. We've been at this all day, and all we have is Mr. Mann's word that there's something happened alongside what is, at best, very flimsy evidence of some sort of tampering. Again with this crap. Athena, listen. I don't think your head of security is up to snuff anymore. The missing two minutes of security surveillance from the vault could be attributed to a simple power failure on the main grid. There is nothing to suggest anyone made it inside the vault. The deposit boxes have been dampened with, but all of them were empty and unused to begin with. All keys are accounted for. Nothing is logged on the internal security system. Nothing happened here. The deposit boxes were clearly accessed, and files were looked through up here and downstairs. That's indisputable. That's what you two claim. What I'm seeing is amateurs at work. A botched attempt at sleight of hand. My guess, there is something in that Cronkite file of yours that you don't want the board to see. And Fabian here came up with a very poor plan to try to locate it before the big review next week. Mm. What a load of shit. Fabian, shut up. Matthew, these are serious allegations. You understand the consequences of making them. Oh, don't bother firing me. I quit. I've done questionable things in the past, but I want nothing to do with this. Maybe you'll be able to cover your tracks. Maybe not. I'm certainly not going to help you. Here's my data drive. I'll resign tomorrow. Second backup data disk is secured. Just one to go, 47. That's the last objective completed. Exfiltrate the bank, 47. Miss Hall will want to have a close look at that data. Olivia has found something interesting. I'll tell you on the way. Where are we going? To paradise, 47. One of the investment bankers at Milton Fitzpatrick is facing termination. He's got a private meeting with Director Savalas and has been told to register at the top floor reception. Well, terminations are your specialty, 47. Director 
like giving that bit woman a piece of my mind. I gave this place everything. Believe it. I who? Yeah, I feel horrible. Excuse me? That looks serious. <laughs> you okay? Money man, yeah, you. I want a word. Who does this guy think he is? Anybody know this Joker? I'm here for a meeting with Director Savalas. I don't think... Oh. Yes, of course. That's right, go inside. Thank you. Excellent, 47. This should be a termination Director Savalas won't forget. Mr. Jackson, have a seat, please. Thank you. Mr. Jackson, as you must be aware, we've been running some numbers internally to measure the flexibility and productivity of people working here at the bank. Work hours, output versus input, sales portfolios, late nights and early mornings, things like that. I've been reviewing personnel files for the past few weeks, and a couple of files stood out. Yours, for instance. Is that so? I have quite specific expectations when it comes to my employees. How you appear and act reflects directly on me and this building. And, well, you've certainly managed to stand out, Mr. Jackson. Tell me, do you knit those sweaters yourself? Or does your wife do that? A man needs a hobby, Miss Savalas. Guard, leave the room. I need a moment alone with Mr. Jackson. Here. So, Mr. Jackson, I'm pleased to inform you that you will be able to explore your hobbies in even greater detail in the near future. We're letting you go, Mr. Jackson. The bank appreciates your contributions over the years, but we feel it's probably best to part ways at this time. This may upset you, but let me assure you that eventually you will come to embrace this point in your life as an opportunity. This is not my first termination, Miss Savalas. Ah, uh, somehow I'm not surprised. HR will send you all the relevant papers, Mr. Jackson. Please gather your things as soon as you can. Good day, Mr. Jackson.
Director Savalas eliminated. Good work, 47. That's the first backup data disk secured. Two more to locate. Say, aren't you Ruby Red, the investigative reporter? I loved your expose on the much talk data abuse. I mean, wow, Jason Portman must hate you. <laughs> so, um, what are you working on now? I'm sorry? I don't know what you're talking about. My name's Tina. Tina Smith. I work in insurance. Right. Undercover, are we? No, no, I'm just not who you think I am, sir. Now, please leave me alone or I'll be forced to alert security. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, it's just, you really look like her. Um, well, have a good day. Ruby Red, famous muckraking investigative journalist, is in the bank. Known for her fierce skills at digging up dirt and her excellent nose for scandal, she's definitely up to something. Might be worth following her around the bank, 47. Do I know him? Teddy, it's me. I'm at the bank now. I still haven't been able to make contact with the informant. Don't you dare dump this story, Ted. I will find that report one way or another. This will be the story of the year. Director Savalas has been acting with extreme recklessness, and the public deserve to know that. My informant will come through. Just make sure you're ready to pull the trigger when I get the documentation. She's going down today, Ted, one way or another. Of course the stock will plummet. I expect that will happen immediately. That's the point, right? Show the world the ugly side of this whole business. We're doing this. I'll email you the documents as soon as I have them. Listen, sir, there's no drama. I just need to check your pockets if you want to pass. Just relax. You'll be on your way in a sec. Okay, let's go, sir. Thank you. Teresa, it's me. Listen, I need your advice. Remember that situation at work I was talking about? Well, I hit a bit of an obstacle here. From what I heard, HR poked him several times. No, nobody's discovered anything, but for some reason, security is super high today. I, I don't think I can get to the documents safely. There's some sort of investigation going on, and they're specifically looking for the file. No, I hid the file in a safety deposit box in the basement. Keys with me here on my desk. Hell, I can even see the journalist from here, but... <sighs> this whistleblowing thing sounds great on paper, but I am telling you it's pretty damn terrifying when you're the one doing it. Yes, I know it's important, but I can't risk my job here. Look, I have to think about this. Maybe there's a way to get down there unseen? Uh, I don't know, I'll call you later. This is just standard procedure. Good. You're this is the vault, 47. I'm really sorry, the data core should be behind that large area steel area door. Now. The head of security suspects there may have been some tampering going on here. But I need my things in there. Well, we'll be done before closing time. Again, I'm really... 
Sorry, but well, at least it's not as bad as that time in Queens. Remember that? Oh, the sixth. Okay. Expect a big no. Great, thanks for nothing. Is that, is that what I think it is? Yes. Just make sure the information will be put to good use. Oh, you can bank on that. Who are you? What's your role in this? I'm not important. Good luck. It sounds like Miss Red has quite a scoop on her hands. My guess is this will cause a major market upset, which is sure to bring the director out from her fortified office. Perfect. Perfect. Sir, I will have to check you if you want to pass, okay? Okay, thank you, sir. This, uh, this will be over in no time. All right, good job, sir. Come to the director's office. I feel like giving them a bit... Woman. is happening to the stock? So are we just supposed to let anyone from IT in there? That's right. You know how crap this old building is with the wireless and how the Chuck. Damn. That's right. You know how crap this old building is with the wireless, and how the director hates seeing cables anywhere? Well, she had her router installed in her office. But... Crap! What is going on yes. here? Can someone explain this? Jesus Christ! How much more uh, shit can happen today? Crap. Shut up. Hello? No, Mum, I'm working. I'll call you tonight, yeah? Just Have you seen Savala's down here recently? She never comes down. Excuse me, sir. I didn't realize... Yes, sir. I've just seen... Well, I... It's very unfortunate, of course. We did discover evidence of some sort of break-in this morning, but... Well, I'm not sure what's happened. Oh, I assure you, that was the plan all along, sir. We were gathering up intelligence for just that sort of report, sir. Perez is on the floor, interviewing people. Man is looking through all the files. I don't know how... It's a mystery, sir. I mean, someone must have planned this. The break-in. It's too much of a coincidence to have something like this happen following a break-in. Someone's trying to affect the stocks negatively. Oh, absolutely. 
Very serious. The FBI will get a full report as soon as we can collate it. You can count on it. Very well. I'll call you directly as soon as I know. And please pass on my regards to the rest of the board. Goodbye, sir. I cannot believe this. Someone's out to get me. Director Savalas eliminated. Good work, 47. That's the first backup data disk secured. Two more to locate. I've only seen him this proactive once before, you know? This is the vault, 47. The data core should be behind that large steel door. Again, I'm really sorry, but Fred keeps coming down here. Hmm. The vault looks even more fortified than we feared. If I'm not mistaken, only high-tier security is allowed in here. Access seems to be restricted to the use of a key card of some sort. Hang on. There's a similar security hub on the second floor. You might be able to acquire what you need there. Okay, I got this. Excellent, 47. Now all that remains is to get inside the vault itself.
Great work, 47. You now have access to the vault. Good work, 47. That's the evidence secured for now. Careful not to lose it. If anyone sees you with that rack, my guess is you'll draw a lot of unwanted attention to yourself. Yes, sir. Oh. So, this is paradise. If you can afford. Gentlemen, glad to hear you made it out of New York. Where are we? Olivia decrypted the Data 47 recovered from the bank. We isolated three transactions from Providence partner accounts. All made out to Haven, a small corporation operating out of the Maldives. And what does Haven do? To the public, they specialize in reputation management for the rich and famous. The real money, however, comes from the covert reconstruction of identities for wealthy criminals. They make people disappear. The partners are using Haven to acquire new identities. Yes, Olivia's been attempting to hack the Haven servers, but the owners of Haven are manually resetting the access keys every 10 hours. That unfortunately, makes them targets. Haven Island is a true tropical paradise. Owned by the company's founder, Tyson Williams, the island is used by Haven as a combined headquarters and client entertainment center. Current and potential clients are ferried to the island and treated to the very best the Maldives have to offer. Michelin star chefs, a full massage spa, private huts, exercise facilities, and all the comforts of a luxury island resort are made available to them. 47, we'll be sending you in as a potential new client. We've put together a convincing cover story. You're Mr. Reaper, a thief for hire looking to disappear for a while. Your mission on the island is simple. You need to eliminate the three owners of Haven. Tyson Williams, founder and rumored tyrannical CEO of Haven. Ludmilla Vitrova, a former confidence artist hired by Williams to serve as a client recruiter and handler. And Stephen Bradley, technical wizard and the brains behind Haven's proprietary software platform. With the owners gone, Olivia will be able to penetrate the Haven servers long enough for her to secure the new partner identities. I've uploaded all the information we have on the island and the three targets. Best of luck, gentlemen. Hmm. I don't rely on luck. Well, a little wouldn't hurt. Welcome to the Maldives, 47. The Haven Island staff is ready to receive you under your assumed identity as Tobias Reaper, a professional thief looking to retire from a life of crime. Ludmilla Vitrova can be found in the public sections of the island primarily tending to client needs. Stephen Bradley alternates between looking after a strict training regimen and working on a small private island. While Tyson Williams roams his large villa estate at the back of the island. 
This is it, 47. Eliminating the three owners of Haven should buy Miss Hall the time needed to do a full penetration and retrieval of the Providence partner data. Best of luck, 47. Wonderful, Doctor. I'm sure Mr. Williams appreciates your visit. See you and your, um, assistant in the pool bar later on, perhaps. Pamela, it's me. You're never gonna guess where I am. Yes, he did. I'm here now. It's amazing. He's apparently got to do his doctor thing here, meet up with some patient called Tyson Williams over at this big villa on the other end of the island. On the other end of the island. I can't believe I'm saying that. It's so nice here. Me? Oh, I'm just gonna chill in the sun, drinking mimosas until I pass out. Tyson Williams has summoned a doctor to the island. He must be feeling under the weather. You have some experience with pain relief, 47. Maybe you could be of assistance? And, you know, spend the time making sure he forgets all about that soon-to-be ex-wife of his. Oh, you bet I am. Over the next two days, I plan on going from his secretary to Mrs. Dr. Singh. All right, darling. Bye. Everywhere. Filth everywhere. Oh. I can't take this. All right. God, this place is a pigsty. I need to seriously scrub down once I'm off this island. <laughs> Have a nice day. I mean, honestly, Charles, I've been curating those handbags for the better part of a decade. Ah, the doctor, right? Mr. Williams is expecting you. Uh, he's in the house. But, uh, sorry, I, I, gotta, I gotta frisk you first, I'm afraid. You like that spy stuff, pal? Sure you do. Everybody loves that stuff. Right, that's it. Keep moving, please. I'm the doctor. Yes, well, <laughs> I guessed as much. 
follow me to Mr. Williams's room, please, and don't touch anything. We're cleaning the house today. Please wait here, Doctor. I'm sure Mr. Williams will be along shortly. Excellent, 47. I hope you can offer the man some assistance. You're not Dr. Singh. Have a good day, sir. Who the sir. hell are you? Dr. Singh is tired. Long night. He asked me to fill in. I knew I shouldn't have allowed him to bring that mistress of his here. I'm running a bad fever here, Doc. Burning up. I can't go outside. I can hardly stay inside. It started about 10 days ago. Singh gave me those pills over there, but they aren't helping. They just give me a migraine. I think I need something stronger here, Doc. Remove your robe, please. I want to check your breathing. So, you're running a fever, Mr. Williams? Yeah, like I said, more than a week now, but the worst thing is the headache. Bad migraine, Doc. The light therapy doesn't help me a lot. What can you do for me? You're not taking your medicine? The pills give me headaches. I have important work to do. Let's have a quick look at you <laughs> before we do anything drastic, Mr. Williams. Fine, fine. Cough, please. <laughs> Look, tell it to me straight, Doc. Is it bad? I got some very serious business to attend to and I really don't have time for this shit. We'll be done soon. Turn around for me. <coughs> oh, hell! Can't you do anything to strangle this cough, Doc? I have a few <laughs> ideas, Mr. Williams. Tyson Williams eliminated. Excellent work, 47. Two targets remaining. Can you believe that Stephen Bradley guy? How is he even allowed to work here? Well, I'm afraid it's gonna be hard to fire him. He's Haven's chief software engineer and one of the owners. He almost killed us. The boat is still out there in the water sunk. I could have been in there and all because he wanted to show off on that water scooter of his. What an absolute ass. 
Yeah, he's not going out again, though. The scuba instructor grabbed his keys and won't give them back to him. I overheard them talking while looking at the gear. So, Stephen Bradley likes to go on water scooters, but is unable to go out because the scuba instructor confiscated his keys. Shame. Those things are very accident-prone. Good. Those things are dangerous enough without some idiot riding them. Nothing over here. Okay. What was that noise? Beard. Ah, not too bad. Mr. Bradley, are these yours? Everywhere for those. You just made my day. I am gonna tear the sea a new one. Thanks, buddy. My pleasure. All right. Let's see how well Mr. Bradley controls that water scooter of his. So, that's Stephen Bradley taken care of. Well done. Just one more target to go.
Reaper, um, I see you don't have your key. No, you need to go to the Welcome Center and pick it up. Mr. Reaper, welcome to Haven. Here is the key for your personal hut. Um, it's the one behind you on the right. Oh, and Miss Vitrova asked me to tell you that she has left a personal message for you in your hut. Have a good day, sir. A note from Ludmilla Vitrova. I wonder what she wants from you, 47. Regardless, it would be a shame to keep her waiting. Miss Vitrova, it's Tobias Reaper. I read your note. Excellent. I reviewed your file prior to your arrival, and I found it very intriguing. I have an offer for you. If you're interested, you can find me over at the restaurant. I'll keep it in mind. Wonderful. I hope to see you there. Good to see you. You mentioned an offer. Yes. It's a little embarrassing, but we've had an incident. A theft. The thief is an employee here. A person working in Mr. Williams' villa at the other end of the island. What was stolen? A USB drive containing some sensitive information. Personal information, which I would rather not fall into the hands of others. So, my offer is this. Obtain the USB drive from the thief without alerting anyone at the villa. The thief is likely still there. I can't get you inside, so you'll have to use that particular skill set of yours to gain access. Do that, and I'll convince Mr. Williams to give you a 50% discount on our service fee. That's a million dollars, Mr. Reaper. A generous offer. The information must be valuable. Mostly to me. It's very personal. Please call me as soon as you've recovered it. Very well. I'll call you.
Protocol? The numbers check out? Yeah, the stats say it's functioning. Voicemail again? Yes. Hello, Miss Vitrova. Just leaving a message. It's me. I... well, I have the item you asked for. Or... I mean, it's not on me, of course. It's in my locker. Anyways, please come by the villa and pick it up. I really don't feel comfortable with this. If Mr. Williams discovers that I've still... Well, please just come and get it. Miss Vitrover, I've acquired the item you wanted. Wonderful. I knew you were the right man for the job. I could feel it the moment I laid my eyes on you. Should we meet? Yes, absolutely. Come to the spa over by the pool area. Everything in order as we discussed. Of course, Miss Vidrova. Good. I want the left room all to ourselves. And no screwing up with double bookings like yesterday with Portman and Mr. Bradley. I'm still trying to sort out that mess. Oh, yes, yes, Miss Vidrova. Again, very sorry about that. Hmm. I'm Mr. Reaper. I have an appointment. 
Ah, yes, Mr. Reaper. You can go right in. Miss Petrova is waiting for you inside. Have a good time. Ah, Mr. Reaper. So good to see you again. Follow me, please. Well, let's see where this ends, shall we? Hello, sir. You, leave us. You have the item with you. Can I have it, please? Here you are. Ah, oh, thank you so much, Mr. Reaper. I can't tell you how much this means to me, Mr. Reaper. I'm afraid things aren't quite as serene here as they may seem on the surface. I'm slowly beginning to understand that. Tyson, Mr. Williams. He's not well. Hasn't been for some time. We used to be together, but his illness. I couldn't take it anymore. I don't know why I'm telling you this. He monitors my every move. I think he asked that girl to steal my information because he wants to... I don't know. Punish me? Kill me? Who knows anymore? Sounds hard. You have no idea. I... I sometimes wish he'd just disappear, you know? Vanish from the face of the planet. And then I'd be free. Anyway, I shouldn't bore you with my personal problems. You've been very helpful. And I will honor my promise and make sure that you get the discount. Perhaps we'll see each other at dinner one of these nights. One-on-one, -on -one, maybe. One-on-one -on -one sounds ideal. Excellent. Well, if you'll excuse me, I have a few calls I need to make. Good day to you, Mr. Reaper. Good work, 47. Ludmilla Vitrova has been permanently retired. That's all we need to do from here. Miss Hall should be able to extract the information needed from the Haven servers. Good work, 47. How was your time in paradise? Productive. Right. We should hear from the others soon. We're in. Whatever your robot did back on the island, it worked. Let's see. Yeah, here we are. You found them? Yeah, right here. But... No, oh, wait a minute. Something's off. See here? All those controlling shares, those are basically the backbone of the Providence Empire, but... but they're not going to the new partner identities. What do you mean? I mean, they're allocated to someone else. Everything is. The partners are, are left with no real control. Who is Arthur Edwards?
Message from Olivia. Everything's going to plan. We know where the partners are. We have our targets. You're almost there, old friend. Feels... good, doesn't it? We should head out before the storm hits. Time to fulfill our purpose, 47. To take them all down. on the line here, you got it? Whoever stole Mr. Williams' USB key had access to the villa, so it must be somebody working with us. Nothing yet. I've told the others this is a top priority, sir. Well, damn it. Review the tapes, find the perp, and get me that USB. Mr. Williams will reward you handsomely for the find. But more importantly, I get to keep my job. That's clearly the most important part, sir. Okay, well, what are you standing around for? Go! A thief in paradise. Someone stolen a USB from Tyson Williams, and now the entire security squad is looking for it. Perhaps you should look closer at those security tapes, 47. Jeez. We might have a possible disturbance. I'm moving to investigate. We'll keep you posted. What was that? Anyone found anything on the security tapes yet? My ass on the line here, you got it? Whoever stole Mr. Williams' USB. I mean, it's not on me, of course, it's in my locker. Anyways, please come by the villa and pick it up. I really don't feel comfortable with this. If Mr. Williams discovers that I've stolen, well, please just come and get it. Do I know him?
Hey, who the hell are you? Welcome, sir. There's got to be something here. Now, where is it? Nothing. How can that be? What are you hiding, Mila? Good, she hasn't changed her password. Let's have a look. Images. How are you today, images. sir? There. Okay. What do we have here? Damn it. Mr. Williams, I understand you were Anything looking Anything you need, just cool. My USB drive. Finally, some good news. And the thief? Taken care of. Good. Good. I like you. Come with me. I'd like to personally reward you for your good work. Access to William's secret office. Good place for a one on one, 47. This thing back in the safe. Change the pin code. All right. That's that. I'll wire a handsome reward to your personal account, my friend. Or maybe. You know what? I have a better idea. Well, Mike. I guess at least one person in my security detail is in a complete failure. This man just brought me my stolen item. You got anything to say for yourself? I, uh, I guess he got lucky. Lucky? Lucky? You get your things and get out of my sight! I guess you just got promoted a personal bodyguard. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Well, Mike's been getting on my nerves for months now. The man's got no sense of personal space, you know? This promotion is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for you. Make the most of it. Rest assured, Mr. Williams. I will. Good man. Your new outfit's in that locker behind you. I'm just gonna do some work in here for a while. Make sure nobody comes in. Yes, sir, Mr. Williams. Tyson Williams eliminated. Excellent work, 47. I'm glad we don't have to talk to that Vitrova woman anymore. Did you notice how clingy she was last night? Portman could hardly get away from her. Embarrassing. She certainly seemed eager. I overheard her talking to one of the staffers as well. Apparently, she's really eager to get him out of the house. No idea why. So that's why the servant lady kept asking if he was in there. Wow, that's really creepy. What is Vitrova up to? So... By the sounds of it, Miss Vitrova is very keen on getting Jason Portman, former CEO of Quantum Leap and current CEO of Much Talk, out of his hut. I wonder why. I don't know. This whole place is really creepy. I can't believe Jason is hoping to sell off everything to these guys. I think he's done for. The media's been having a field day with him selling part of the data to harvesters and advertisers. He just wants out now. He told me he'd asked Haven for half a billion. Half a billion? But his stocks are worth three times that much. That'll drop the price completely. 
Ugh, I'm selling my shares in Mush Talk tonight. Hang on. That's Jason Portman, former CEO of Quantum Leap and current CEO of Much Talk, the disreputed social media network currently involved in a user data scandal. Why is he here, 47? So, what's up? Well, as I mentioned at dinner last night, we're prepared to pay you $500 million for your controlling shares in much talk. But as you left, I sensed some... apprehension. Well, frankly, I was surprised to see that goddamn hack Stephen Bradley at dinner last night to discover he is part of your company. Well, let's just say I'm not impressed. I understand you have a troubled past with Stephen. Something about a college project. Troubled? That's putting it mildly. He stole my concept and, and my code and made millions on it. I'm really not too keen on giving him the keys to my latest empire. Perhaps if you looked at it like this. Stephen has been unable to construct anything remotely resembling Quantum Leap and much talk. Your work is clearly superior to his, which is why we're offering you half a billion. I suppose. Look, Jason, I feel like we're very close to making an agreement here, and, well, you did come to us with your particular needs. How about I set up a nice session over at the spa for you? Release the tension a bit. <sighs> I don't know. I have to think about this. That's perfectly fine. I'll come by later. some weird noises. I'll have a look around. That was. Hmm? So that's Jason Portman taken care of. I wonder what Miss Vitrova will do now. What's so important about this Portman guy? Have a good one. Miss Vitrova, uh, Mr. Portman appears to be away from his hut now. I'll see you soon, Miss Vitrova. Is Portman still away? Uh, I think so. I haven't seen him for a while, Miss Vitrova. Excellent. That's all.
Ah, hello. Uh, Mr. Portman was just asking for you, over by the spa. It sounded important. Perhaps you should go and try and find him there? Hello, sir. Okay. That must be his computer. Hmm. Password. Better call Stephen. Stephen, it's me. I have Portman's computer. What now? Okay. Got it. And then what? Okay. I'll do that now. Talk to you in a few. Stephen, it worked. We're in. Now I just need that USB from the villa. I'm hoping our new arrival, Mr. Reaper, might be of assistance here. He certainly looks to have the skills. Did it. Two targets remaining. Good work, 47. Ludmilla Vitrova has been permanently retired. Ah, oh, you did it, Mila. You're almost finally free of this place. No more Tyson Williams, no more playing the hostess, no more fake smiles, fake names, fake everything. It's time to take back your life and ruin everyone else's in the process. Miss Vitrova, it's Tobias Reaper. I read your note. Excellent. I reviewed your file prior to your arrival, and I found it very intriguing. I have an offer for you. If you're interested, you can find me over at the restaurant. I'll keep it in mind. Wonderful. I hope to see you there. Oh, I almost forgot. If you'd like a massage, the room's available. Just lie down, and someone will be with you shortly. Goodbye, Mr. Reaper. It's me. We have everything we need. Tyson's personal data is with me now, and Portman's computer is breached. Now, we talk. Come to the spa. All right, I'm here. Let's talk. I think we'd do well to engage in a bit of privacy. Follow me to the hot tubs. You, leave us. Hmm. Uh, so, you wanted to talk? We have to expedite our plans. Tonight. It has to be tonight. What? Why? Stephen, we need to leave. I've never seen Tyson this paranoid. He's monitoring my every move now. It's just a matter of time before he finds out about us. All right. Well, then that's what we do. I guess I can trigger the money transfer from my laptop. And just burn it afterwards. And the database wipe? Did accessing Portman's computer do the trick? 
that idiot gave us everything we needed to disappear from every online database in the world. Sure, we'll nuke every hospital and criminal record in the U.S. in the process, but, you know, it should work. Wonderful. In case it doesn't, there's a guest here, Mr. Reaper. He could possibly help us get rid of Tyson. Reaper? Ah, yeah, the, the late arrival. Bold move, Mila. I don't think we'll need it, though. The worm should work just fine. You know me, darling. Always make sure there's a contingency plan. We can activate him once we're off the island. Okay. I'll get the last thing sorted out. Tonight, Ludmila Vetrova and Stephen Bradley say goodbye to the world. Good riddance, too. Two targets remain. So, that's Stephen Bradley taken care of. Well done. Just one more target to go. Good work, 47. Ludmilla Vitrova has been permanently retired. What's that you've got in your hand? What the heck? I threw it myself.